Wow. Well, that was a um, complex, complex game. Oh my god. I think White. I think White missed a mate in a couple moves on move 36 move with 36? Rook G5 check. Maybe. Rook G5. Uh, sorry. So instead of Rook E8. Yeah. Rook G5 check. Pawn takes Rook. Rook E8. King H7. Bishop E4. Right. King H6, Rook H8, Somebody's right? Somebody's been doing their puzzle rush. I'm looking at you, David. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. Um, wow. Well, this was really nice play on Shushang Yu's side as well. We do have to give him some credit for the nice attack. Yeah, for the so. resources. I mean, yeah. what a crazy game. And then you, like, you like lose your queen in some massive crazy tactics and then keep going. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, that's what the pandas needed. Everybody, I am here with international master David Proust. We're going to be doing commentary for the Pacific Division today. Hopefully you guys had fun with Levy and with Jen. We know that was a super exciting match to watch. Obviously the pair up between the chess bra and the St. Louis Archbishops was the one everybody had their eye on. What did you think of that result, David? Yeah, it'll be hard for the Pacific to match um, that sort of drama and excitement and high level chess. Usually the Pacific division is, you know, in a pr pretty good position to stand up there. Right. Um, but that match was lived up to everything that it was supposed to be. So, yeah, I was um, I was pretty impressed. Um, and uh, I think the bras got a well-deserved victory. Yeah, fair enough. Um good to see familiar faces in the chat hi crazy coffee man and everybody who's been watching hopefully you guys will stick around as well Icelandic Gabbit pointing out that last year the Pacific Division had some crazy games so we're hoping to see some of those today as well we have yeah. an interesting matchup today so let's just quickly take a look at who is playing why don't we start with the SF mechanics versus the Seattle sluggers since for those of you who don't know David is the team management manager of the San Francisco mechanics Okay, well, um, I should know who's playing in that match. Um, I think that uh, there's two pretty exciting super GMs playing there. Obviously, Hikaru Nakamura for the Sluggers and uh, Wang Hao making his debut for the Mechanics uh, today. So um, those will be the two, the two big names to watch for in that match. But um, the Sluggers also have Gabriel Sargisian, who's a hair short of, short of 2,700. 
on board too. And uh, we've got local boy Danya Naroditsky on board too for the mechanics. So yeah. some good GMs there. Definitely. Um, speaking of good GMs, we also have the Chengdu Pandas, one of the strongest teams in the Pro Chess League. They're going to be playing against Dallas Destiny today. Um, they have Dallas Destiny has Grandmaster Jeffrey Shong. He has been yeah. playing incredibly well, so he's going to be someone we're looking out for against the strong Chengdu Pandas, who are currently the second seed in the uh, Pacific Division. Yeah. The other guy I want to watch is Alexei Serana. Mm -hmm. um, he went 4-0 against uh, the Mechanics last week. And um, no, overall, I mean, he's been one of the best players in the league so far to start off the season, um, despite not being, you know, rated 2,800. And um, his team is currently just a, just a point ahead of the um, just a point ahead of the Chengdu Pandas in right. the overall standings. Yeah. Um, so if he continues to perform, the Kangaroos could continue to be a contender for top spot in the whole Pacific Division. Which would be super exciting. Do we have any Australians in the chat? People cheering for the Kangaroos. We know Tagbon is there. Tagbon definitely cheering for them. It'll be fun to see their matchup as well. We also have the San Diego Surfers against Minnesota Blizzard. We know that the Minnesota Blizzards are a fan favorite. They have a lot of popular streamers like Andrew Tang and John Bartholomew, who isn't playing today, but Andrew Tang is. So yeah. I'm pretty excited for that matchup. It's it's very close. Do you have any predictions? I for that for that particular match, I think that one's gonna be really, really close. When I was trying to pick like the fantasy team, mm -hmm. I was thinking between Sean Nagel and Craig Hilby for board four for a while. Okay. And I think finally I picked Sean Nagel, um, which I always pick players who I think their team is going to win, right? But I think it's gonna be like eight and a half, seven and a half. So basically I had to say like, you know, when it comes down to it in the last round, which of these guys is gonna beat the other guy and like win the match for their team on board four. So um, I would say Minnesota by one point or half a point, or maybe to be wow. maybe eight eight. I like this. This is a very bold prediction. You not only predicted who you think is going to win by by how much, so I'm pretty excited to see what yeah. happens with that one. Yeah, I'll go eight and a half for Minnesota. Okay. Um, yeah. So it looks like we've previewed all of the teams. They should be starting shortly. Oh, it looks like some of the games have already started. Actually, speaking of Absolutely. starting shortly. So let's see, we have the game between the San Diego Surfers and Minnesota Blizzards starting off first. I'm looking right now at the game between International Master Sean Nagel and Grandmaster mm -hmm. Alexei Dreev. Speaking of your favorite fourth board, right? Yeah, and uh, Dreev by 100 points is the highest rated player in this match. Um, uh, Minnesota always has this super balanced lineup, right? With players mm -hmm. rated like 2520 and 2480 and 2510 and 2470. Um, and uh, San Diego has a relatively balanced lineup as well, but they usually have Alexei Dreyf playing almost every match for them at 2650. And then their other players are just a little bit uh, lower. Um, Got it. So Dreyf is a big performer for them, very, very important for their success. That, that makes sense. Sorry, I was just uh, looking quickly at yeah. chat because I was hearing people saying my mic is off. So uh, why don't I switch and see if there's any games a little further along. The game between uh, Grandmaster Fidel Corrales and International Master Craig Hilby. Maybe you can explain yeah. a little what's going on there and I will quickly fix my mic situation. Sure thing. And I'll just say that in that game we just saw for a moment, Sean Nagel played the exchange variation of the Slav. And everybody, I think that's a pretty solid choice for a fourth board to play in round one against the GM. Just mm -hmm. that attitude of make the GM beat you, be willing to, you know, get a draw. Because even half a point from your board four against the opponent's board one can I can kind of put the whole te other team like kind of worrying that they're not going to get the points they need to win the match. Got it. Um, well, I just showed the the uh, exchange slab you were talking about here. Speaking yeah. of interesting strategies. Uh, hopefully we'll see yeah. the fourth board get some type of upset on this first game. We've seen that a lot during the rest of the matches, and we know how important it is to have a strong board four. So, Right. Um, speaking of exciting games, uh, Andrew yeah. Tang is already trying to go and get an attack in his game against international master Daniel Bryant. He's already threatened made him one as if yeah. it were a bullet game, huh? Yeah, uh, hey, hang on Russian here. I, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a nice threat to dream about, but pretty easy to defend with G6 yeah. and Andrew playing Queen E2 back. Um, yeah. 
I found my results in bullet increased slightly when I just threw in an occasional made in one threat like this, but I mean, 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm. Not, not going to do it. So he gets kicked back queen to E2, but I would bet that Andrew's thinking about H4, H5. I mean, otherwise he moved his queen twice for no reason. Right? So he, if he has a reason, I would think H4, H5 could be on the table here. H4, H5. Yeah, that makes sense in this kind of position where white is just trying to pawn storm on the black king side here. Do you think Andrew Tang wants to castle at some point here or he's just going to go launch for the attack? And I think part of the reason he's been holding back on it is so he's got the option of castling queen side so he could play H4. Right. Um, and it looks like John Daniel is trying to counter in the center before the wing attack even comes. There's this famous saying in chess, obviously, like counter... Uh, an attack against your king or an attack on the wing mm -hmm. with a uh, counterattack in the center. And white hasn't even played h4 yet, and he's already traded on d4 and played bishop f6, which to me says he's trying to play e5 in answer to h4. Okay. Um, so yeah. what side would you take in this game? Uh, I think Andrew, knight f3, trying to stop e5, rook e8, still trying to play e5. I think overall, I slightly prefer white's position so far because of the bishop on d7. Mm -hmm. I think it's a slightly worse piece, and there'll be some work to make it happen. And uh, I think h4, h5 is always a pretty reasonable plan for white. It could involve castle and queenside. It could also involve just playing king f1 to get off the e file. Right. And say, hey, I want my rook on the h file. I'm not going to do one of those things where you castle, play g3, king g2, h4, rook h1, and then attack. Like... And interesting, and he just he just castled kingside. He completely ignored any side. plan we had yeah. for this. Um, okay, glad to hear yeah. that the the mic is fixed. Perfect. Okay. Either it was never his plan, or he just felt like e five was too much of an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, and I'd be surprised if he didn't think about h four. It really looked like he was thinking about it. So yeah, I thought I so too. He decided that that e five was too much on the table, and he would have to. Get his rooks in the center before he starts a kingside attack. Right. Seems like he had some type of change of heart. Um, Everybody's saying your mic is perfect, so hooray. So hooray, that was fixed. Let, let's take a quick yeah. look at the game uh, between Mauricio Flores and Jay Joso. So international yeah. master Joshua Sheng and grandmaster Mauricio Flores. Um, this is looking pretty cramped for black here, actually. Yeah, Joshua's got a nice knight outpost on d5. I yep. think Mauricio's thinking that c6 is called for. Right. Because, um, get rid of that piece that's cramping him and get some more space maybe for the bishop on d8. Make white worry about the a5 pawn. Although white might be happy to play b4 and not really care, but still it gives the bishop some more avenues. Right. Um, and I, I would say the long-term problem for white is the bishop on h2. That's a good point. Um, the bishop on h2, while it seems like it's helping protect the king here since it's close to his king side, is also very blocked off. I do imagine that um, it's still a better position piece than black's bishop on d8. So at least if the position opens, which black will want to do anyway, then white will also activate his own bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here comes white on the queen side. Yeah, it partly depends what part of the board gets opened up. I mean, with this pawn structure, the normal plan for black is f5, and the normal plan for white is c5. Right. But action on the king side is more likely, and Mauricio's looking at action on the king side with rook g8. Uh, action on the king side is more likely to open white's bishop as sort of a defending useful piece, and action on the queen side is more likely to open black's bishop as a defending useful piece. So it, it'll be interesting to see how much aggression actually pays off in a situation where you'll be opening up your opponent's bad minor piece to join the fight. Right, but it seems like no player here is hesitating to try <laughs> and open up the position. White is going straight for no. c4, eyeing c5. Um, I mean, black can... What do you think about the move bishop g5 and trying to uh, activate his bishop? Because if white takes back with the knight uh, and he takes with the h-pawn, then he has one more pawn that he could use for the attack on the king side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could certainly play bishop g5 if he if he wanted to. Um, and I think the trade on g5 would be perfectly good for black, as, for exactly the reasons you say. H-file would be nice. Mm -hmm. Option of g5, g4 once or twice. Knight coming to f4. 
and just promoting a rook pawn. Like rook pawns are worth less than every other pawn, except in certain end games. So, so right, right. Um, yeah, a little. I'm gonna just quickly flip the board to look at it from Black's perspective. From Black's perspective. Yeah. Do you? I find... would say the only reason not to play Bishop G5 is that White doesn't have to take it, and then right. You know what's what's coming next. Maybe what Black really wants to play is F5. And maybe bishop g5 doesn't add much to that right maybe it makes more sense to just start the attack as fast as possible because a lot of times in these kinds of positions where black is attacking on the king side white's attacking on the queen side timing does matter and just being able to launch the attack first might be what leads to a decisive victory later on we've got some really standard pawn structure plans in this first match i mean yeah. this first match is just telling us very clearly white's as you said, nobody's hesitating in this game, right? White's pushing all the queenside pawns without thinking too much. Black F5 without thinking so much. Right. If you click back to Andrew Tang for a moment, um, you'll see that as soon as the two players had fought over control over E5 and Andrew had said, okay, you can't break with E5, mm -hmm. the very next thing that happens is Black launches a famous attack called the minority attack. Right. Looking to make a pawn weakness on the white queenside. Yep. And... Uh, and Andrew launches the H-pawn going to H5 for the classic kingside attack. Yeah, uh, it seems like on both of the boards that we look so far, both players are really fighting to get any type of attack here. They're playing interesting games. It's not, you know, a closed uh, George Meyer position. Just kidding. Yeah. You know, that kind yeah, of position no. is fun as well. <laughs> Uh, you no, know, both of these two games that we're looking at right now, definitely with opposite side attacks, they both say, hey, there's going to be major imbalances, mm -hmm. high likelihood that somebody loses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, somebody in chat is asking if uh, John Bartholomew is playing. He's not playing in this in this match, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, On the other hand, the other two games in this match are kind of like the contrasting kind of position that you were talking about. If you click back to the exchange Slav, uh, um, yeah. You will see that Here Alexei Dreyev has successfully been kept without many winning chances by Sean Nagel. Right. Um, this was the kind of game I was joking about earlier that, that we yeah. weren't seeing. Right. Uh, so Nagel has traded a couple pieces, controlled the C file. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the knight's doing on H5 because it really doesn't look like Black's going to have a checkmating attack this game. Right. Um, so if anything, I would favor white slightly because of the queen on a4 and rook on c1. But obviously, this is a kind of squeezing stones kind of kind of game compared to what we've just been looking at. Yeah, exactly. There's no direct plan where white can come up with a crushing attack. Instead, what white is trying to do is, you know, slowly get into a better end game in this kind of position. Double his rooks on the c file as fast as possible. Keep his overall. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. And then if we look at the other game that we haven't been looking at, Craig Hilby versus Fidel Corrales, we see a similar thing where it's sort of a more balanced end game with um, very high chances for a draw. So yeah. both, both fourth boards are using the white pieces to kind of try and kill the game a little bit. Right. Um, which is, you know, the strategy that I've mentioned and suggested can be effective. Um, yeah, and this is an opposite strategy than what you see in high-level Grandmaster games. Normally, black is trying to equalize and white is fighting for an advantage. But it makes sense that if you're playing somebody much higher rated, you would prefer to get into lines that are close, more difficult to play, you're more comfortable with, don't have sharp attacks on either side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, David, so you, your the, team we... manager thinking is coming out. I really like it. Okay. <laughs> you see both fourth boards trying to sort of kill the game. At the same time, you see the second and third boards a little bit more like, hey, I can take on the other team's second board. Yeah. I can get the full fight. I'm going to maybe get an upset here that'll set my team off on like a, a killing, you know. Right. Streak. And and speaking of the killing streak, I went back to Grandmaster Mauricio Flores' game with international yeah. master Joshua Shang, just because yep. Black seems to have gotten the edge in the attack here at least he's much yeah. further along and you could see that white has already been forced to bring his pieces closer to the king side so you can tell whose attack seems more pressing at least in the short term yeah and he's done the bishop maneuver you suggested he said hey if white's not getting to me on the queen side if he's not breaking on the queen side then this bishop on d8 is useless so right. i'm ready to swing it over g5 f4 mm -hmm. and get some action going um I mean, White's only one move C5 away from having his own kind of 
target. So mm -hmm. I imagine that Josh was still in an okay position, but right. uh, looks interesting. Uh, Mauricio wants to get a knight outposted on f4. That's his that's his thought here. Yeah. Put pressure on d5, pressure on g2. And you're right, he just played c5. Um, yeah. So I'm curious what black strategy should be here, because uh, at, he has to decide to what extent he wants to actually deal with white's attack on the queen side versus continuing his own attack on the king side. And this is a calculation that any player has to do in these multi-pronged attack type games. What would you try to think of as black in this position? After the move c5, mm -hmm. so the move I would not want to play is rook b to d8. Okay. Um, the first thing you would probably calculate would be bishop h2, knight f4. It's the most direct and it's mm -hmm. kind of like your plan. Um, some players might even just play it without calculating. Right. They might say, putting the knight on f4 improves my position. I could try to guess what square white's queen's going to go to, but they're going to have like five options. So why would I spend a bunch of time calculating what happens after knight f4? I know I want my knight on f4. Right, right. So trade, king takes, knight f4, let your opponent think for like 30 seconds or a minute. And then while they're thinking, you're calculating, are you going to try and take on d5 with your knight? Are you going to play rook b to d8? Are you going to ignore that whole queen side thing and play mm -hmm. you know, g5, g4, or something like that? Yep. Yeah, um, that seems like one potential solid plan for black. I am a little bit worried about his d6 pawn in this position, but yeah. it's not too hard to defend. It just, once again, ties black's pieces to a defending role rather than being able to continue the attack here. Yeah, and maybe the correct way to play a position like this is just... You play, you know, you play the bishop trade knight f4 like he's doing, mm -hmm. and then you just play rook d8, and you say, "Hey, I do have to defend this pawn." But yep. oh, and so the game goes. continued, like you said. Yeah, but overall, I would have to say that despite the fact that Black opened a file first with f5, and has this amazing knight, somehow I still feel like White's position is pretty good. That's fair. Um, um, the bishops got I, traded I off like here. Just... It feels like d6 is a little bit annoying, and. On any move like g5 going for g4, I start to feel like the black king is kind of loose and white can play queen to g4 right. here maybe to keep his queen active. Right. And I don't know. It feels it feels reasonably active for white to me right now. Yeah, that's fair. I, I guess if you don't buy black's attack on the king side here, then white is the one who is getting his pawns a lot more active, closer to the goal of eventually promoting or getting a pass pawn, which would lead to a better endgame for white. So, yeah. yeah, interesting. Okay, I see that some of the games with the San Francisco mechanics have also started. All right. Uh, so the San Francisco map. one. Yeah, they're still on move one, so we'll give him some time to get things still crazy. Going. Even Hikaru can't play that fast, but we'll make sure to look at his game soon as well. All right. But uh, it's... Is, I mean, some of the opening selections look pretty exciting. We've got a Pierce defense and a Knight or Sicilian. So there there could be some good stuff eventually when yeah. we come around if, to this. If, if you have a game you recommend looking at, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'll quickly look at a Grandmaster Andrew Tang's position because he has a pawn on H7. Uh, yeah. Things have gotten pretty crazy. Okay, and he has sacrificed or traded, I guess. It's just a complicated trade. Yeah. Two pieces for a Rook and a bunch of pawns. Yeah. This is definitely the position we should have been on, I guess. Yeah, um, I'll just rewind a little bit to see what happens. Show since us we a last couple things of what happened. Right. Okay. So. So he starts maneuvering his queen mm -hmm. to the king side at move twenty. Right. And uh, immediately, Black challenges him with f six, and he just sacks the piece. Yep. He doesn't care that the f six pawn is threatening his bishop here. He thinks that taking on g six and taking on h seven is more valuable. He's taking the t the the king pawn. Sorry, mm -hmm. I guess they are more valuable than the bishop here. And his pieces are also very active. The knight, bishop, queen, all pointing towards the king side. Maybe at some point he can bring his rook in as well with a rookie three lift or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's only the traitor pawn on h7 that's keeping white from knocking black out here. Right. His own pawn is actually defending black here. And yeah. that's actually a pretty common defense for either side. If your opponent is attacking you on your king side and say he took a pawn that is really close to your king, often instead of taking it back, so say his king was on h7, pretend the bishop wasn't on d3, you actually want to use it to block and become kind of like a defender for your own king. 
We'll think of him yeah. as a, a traitor pawn temporarily. Yeah. So white can't just win the game with queen h4. Instead, knight f7 happens, which kind of trades some stuff off. And uh, that's how we get this material balance we have, where everything's getting captured. Yep. Just I just rewinded back to that point where you were saying, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, takes d4. OK, I'm in the final position now. Yeah, me too. Um, looks like all the pawns are traded in the center. Um, because I would kind of expect white to, to trade on d4 as well here. So you would expect white to take back c takes d4 here? I would. I mean, the other alternative might be bishop c4 looking to play queen g8. That's an exciting move. Um, but, but he can't play I, queen g8 right away. Right. So you yeah. play bishop c4, and I think black would probably just take on c3 and allow it. Because right. queen g8 check only wins in exchange, and then mm -hmm. black's got three minor pieces in the pass pawn on c3. So. Yeah, I'm playing that line out with rook takes g8, uh, and then black can play bishop takes g8, win the exchange back, but this ending looks pretty complicated for yeah. for white here. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, he has a pass pawn on c3. Uh, he has an exchange in advance, but he's going to be protecting that c3 pawn, and black's pieces are pretty coordinated here. Yeah, so I would think that endgame would be acceptable for black, and I would expect Tang to just take on d4. That said, he's been thinking a long time about this move. And he and just he played bishop c4. Okay, uh, d takes c3. I'm curious how he's going to lead up with this. Maybe he has another plan. Okay, bishop b1. Interesting. So he's oh, not going he straight for g8. Yeah, it occurred to me after I said that. I was like, but maybe he's going for rook to d1 or rook to b1 here. Um, yeah, what he was trying to do here is uh, distract the black rook, because if he took on b1, then white could play queen g8 immediately. Of course, black is uh, no noob to those kinds of threats so he played rook c8 and rook v7 yeah so black needs to find a square for this bishop like g4 is maybe the only one i see yeah. he's almost out of squares i mean bishop g4 maybe queen f7 yeah i like the idea of queen f7 so after bishop g4 queen f7 right away attacking the bishop on g7 forcing black to defend it looks like queen f8 is the only move to defend the bishop here. Um, and this seems really hard to play as black. Yeah, I mean, white just barely can't win with queen g8 yep. and trade everything, followed by rook e8 back rank mate, because there will be bishop f8. Right. Once, once the black king's on g8, he'll be defending bishop f8. Yep. So I don't, I don't yet see a back rank mate. So this is the line we were talking about. It doesn't work right away because of bishop f8, but it's, it still looks much better than the other version, where uh, because where um, Andrew Tang had his rooks on the first file, he's a lot more active here. And if he plays rook c7, he's very likely going to get the c3 pawn, which was creating the most of the most of the damage because it was a pass pawn. And his rooks are so active that he's going to create a lot of pressure on these two bishops. So I wonder, I wonder what's coming next here. I mean, I'm wondering about moves even like rook to c7. Oh, okay, uh, rook c7 here. There's, a, I mean, but wait, rook c7 gets me by queen g8, right? Yeah, rook c7 for white is what I'm thinking of, Alexander. Okay, sorry. Sacking the rook to both those pieces. But it doesn't it doesn't quite work after queen d5 by black. But black actually can't take on c7 with either piece because of queen g8. And then, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, now he goes for this. So he, huh. he got into the end game where he's playing with two rooks versus the bishop pair and the knight. So up the exchange has to deal with a little bit of... A tricky pass pawn on c3 but i think his rooks are yeah. just much more active here although he is like very just, down on time it looks like he's just planning to force the bishop back to f8 and then play rook c7 and deal with the c pawn like that right but actually now john daniel bryant's thinking about the possibility of playing king h7 a move which had not really occurred to me you right know, a few moves back yeah king h7 um and you like this better then bishop f8 because your king is not going to be tied to the eighth rank here yeah and 
we should probably click around because there's so many other games, even though this is fascinating. Yeah. Let's let's look at Mauricio Flores' game again for a second and just see what Joshua has managed to do. Well, I'm not a big um, fan of doubled pawns. No one really is, but I will take them if they're both passed <laughs> in, in yeah. a position like this. Yeah, it looks like he's managing to cover his king nicely with the rook, and like his D pawn, at least one of the D pawns must be a problem at some point here. Yeah. Uh I mean, at first glance, I definitely prefer white here. I guess it's not hard since he's also up a pawn. <laughs> easy to prefer extra <laughs> yeah, pr pawn. Yeah, pretty easy to prefer white in this situation. All right, so black stops queen e5, which was sort of the obvious threat going yep. to an end game that would be easy. Um, so can white can white do anything here to just go on with his um, idea of helping? promote that deep on okay so he doubled his rooks he might be considering rook takes f7 here yeah because that's yeah. that's what he had in mind with this doubling i think right so black is forced to come back otherwise he would lose his queen okay so he traded off the rooks now he just puts it right back on c7 Ooh, he's actually playing with like no risk here right like yeah he's, his king is totally safe now and these deep pawns are getting really dangerous mm -hmm. There are scenarios where he could play, like, you know, his queen to attack the b7 pawn as well. Right, queen b6. And you, you're very correct in saying that his king isn't in any threat here because if black plays something like queen b1, it's really easy for white to play either king g2 or h2. He has no risks of perpetuals. Um, I don't think the black pawns are fast enough to open up the position here oh. because white's ready to promote. He got him. He D7, got him. That was a nice move. I was looking at rook e7 with the idea that if black takes it then you have d6 to defend the pawn right and if it doesn't you just capture on e5 and you know keep playing the simple way he was but d7 looks like a right and like just to show rook takes d7 fails because rook takes d7 queen takes uh the black queen doesn't just have to take on e5 he can take on g5 first and then I also when all they, of them. yeah just take all the pawns here you know yeah. he's hungry it's dinner time here on the west coast so he's he's going for everything um, that's it i mean here you can do the same thing he can queen to distract the queen then take on e5 with check right and there's got to be you know some something strong there oh i love it we're starting with an upset um yeah but this was not the the well you were saying both of the fourth boards on these teams were very strong so yeah so it's not it's not like a 2100 beating hikaru or anything like that yeah. but um they're still you know they're they're playing 100 to 200 yeah. points up. Oh, and Penguin just won his game. Uh, I'll just go quickly to see what happened. It seems like he won. He was able to trade off the rook for a knight and a bishop. That's what was about to happen. And in that position, uh, white can pretty easily trade the rook for a pawn and a bishop. And he just has two pawns up. Oh, uh, yeah. It looks like this yeah. knight to e2 move was probably... I was... Oh, no. After knight d4, rook e4, both pieces were attacked, yeah. right? Because g7's not really defending the knight, yeah. so he was just lost here. Yeah, wow. I guess the main thing to take away from this position is black's pieces weren't very well coordinated, and in a position where you're playing with the minor pieces against the rooks, that's what you have to be most careful about, or you'll fall for things like this. Okay, yeah, and Mauricio Flores just uh, lost to international master, international master Joshua Shang. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that d pawn. Yeah. Didn't even need the second one. Took care of it. Right. I think they've got a chance of getting a point back here from Alexei Dreyev. Despite that that strategic exchange Slav mm -hmm. from Sean Nagel, it looks like he has managed to work his way into the king side with an H pawn. He's taken an open file with his rooks. So yeah. And there's he... a lot to defend for White here. Including his time. He has twenty seconds, you know, the the sweat beads are getting bigger and bigger by the second. I think this is a very difficult position for white to defend. Okay, yeah. rook d2. Yep. And it's really Just adding e to the pressure. Ooh, 15 seconds, Alexandra. Yeah. Well, I'm not even going to ask you which side would you prefer here. You don't get the easy <laughs> answer. <laughs> um so no. can black just try to double on the second foul no okay he's playing queen g5 so i'm guessing Ooh, queen, queen e3 e5 or queen e5 he's not going to recapture right queen e5 queen e5 because it's also got the mate on h2 if the bishop moves right um makes sense 
Yeah. Honestly, I would never take the side that has 10 seconds, unless it's like king and queen against king. Like, I just don't want to have 10 seconds on my clock. That's fair. Do you play any bullet online? I mean, you obviously do, but are you a fan? A little bit. <laughs> a little I'm bit. not. I'm, I'm not. I don't know why I do it to myself. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to stay on this game, or is there another game you think we should check out before it wraps I think, up? I think this game is is over, so we could we could pop over to another one, see how this opposite colored bishop ending's going. All right. Hilby and Corrales. Yeah. So, what do you think? Is this still in the realm of of the fourth board holding a draw? So let's see. Obviously, opposite colored bishop end games tend to be very drawish, but when there's rooks still on the board, it's more complicated. That being <laughs> said, there's equal material. Um, white can white can at least hold this i mean i imagine if he plants his rook on c3 his bishop can be on c5 he's protecting all of his pawns so it's just not easy for hard to come up with a winning plan so, yeah come there's up with a thing you plan. could try with black is put your rook on g4 and then play f4 that's exactly and... what he's doing nice find yeah, and then, then take on h4 and then you've got an outside pass pawn and white's got more pawns that don't really do much right so it works we should expect f4 here yep we should it's the it's the way that grandmasters beat you when you think you've played a great game and that you're going to get a draw right and then like they still beat you in some opposite colored bishop ending by doing things like this oh i like rook g3 nice defense because nice if defense. he took on f4 we have rook g7 which after white is able to bring in his king he should have mating chances or a perpetual so obviously black was like had hey, nice try buddy rook g4 and he yep. traded off here okay yeah, he'll be invested 10 of his 20 seconds on a critical choice there. Do I trade rooks or do I go rook h3? Um, so now the only winning plan for black would be to penetrate the king side with their king. So right. if you're white, you should play king b4, king c3 and stuff, maybe? Uh, oh, no, he's going to d6. So nice. he thinks he's going to restrain black by taking one of black's pawns and getting counterplay. Right, and black just lets him take Black's on like, c6 Whatever, right away wow i'm still holding back all the other pawns here that's true um, um i mean white can try to push so let's say black gets his king close enough to his g2 pawn that's what he's trying to do here he's trying to bring the king yeah. close enough to help the pawn on g2 promote but if that happens maybe white has an f5 break and d5 never mind he doesn't have any more f pawn yeah four seconds oh. left it's really hard to play this accurately oh my gosh yeah i was gonna say it's still defensible but it's certainly a bit unpleasant right yeah so white's pawns are all on on black squares which is important because it means that if the white king can defend the bishop oh that looked bad he had to keep the king on d2 yeah he doesn't want to let him go for a3 i mean the white bishop yeah, can't so. can't attack it but the black king can oh he's done so I was going to say, Alexandra, is, but he like blundered it before I could say it, is he wants to keep the king on d2 and shuffle the bishop between g1 and e3. And yeah, I I'm going to go back to that still... position. So hold on d2 and just shuffle. I'll go back a little bit to what you were saying. Yeah, that would hold. You just need to keep your king on its most active square and shuttle with your bishop. Right. Shuttling with a bishop usually is pretty neutral. Of all the pieces you can shuffle with, like a bishop can often shuffle pretty neutrally. But yeah. your king, I mean, coming to the first rank and just letting black walk across the third. Right. Uh, so I guess what you're saying he should have played on move 79 is bishop f2. White could have continued with king f3, to which he just shuffles his bishop back to g1. Um, and, yeah. and black's king can't actually come around to h2 or f2 to kick out the bishop off of the g1 square. All right. So on to the mechanics yeah. match. Um, now that we see, um, now that we see the result of the first round mm -hmm. here between the Blizzard and the Surfers, um, two to two. Okay. Well balanced so far. Um, look at Hikaru's position. Let's it's go not, to Hikaru's position. It's not quite Hikaru esque yet, is it? You mean completely winning? <laughs> right. <laughs> a Hikaru position would be a position where he's steamrolling his opponent. Right. Uh, you're right, he's not steamrolling yet because uh, it's an endgame where white has an extra pawn. I mean, I would say that black's pieces are more developed here and his king is slightly better placed, but white's up a pawn! Yeah, I would say black can hold, but, um, but uh, you know, even if your opponent's Hikaru, you'd be disappointed to lose this endgame as white. Yeah, 
if you get this so. nice of a position against Hikaru, you made it to move 26, the queens are traded off, you're not in time pressure. Oh. So yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like uh, Lottie on his debut has played a good first game for a board four, solid, simple right. chess in the style we've been talking about. And you were um, you were telling me before the match that Lottie is actually an international master elect, as is yeah. the other third board player for yeah, the he mechanics. He recently played some some like z some regional tournament, like the North American Under eighteen Championships or the Pan Am eighteen Championships or something, and got eight and a half out of nine and it was an automatic title without needing more norms right um okay well do you want to go to another daniel narodisky sure i was gonna say check out our other board the other board one in this match um oh okay wang but how sure, daniel narodisky is exciting as well okay i'll, I'll stick to daniel's sure game and then go to wang how and also people right. are talking about some crazy snowball drama in the chat including greg shahadi i'll let you guys talk that one out i have no idea what's going on um so let's let's something see this position huh? something about snowballs yeah and stealing magnus's oh, drink the snowball in the fridge and all that oh you heard right. about it i mean i i i saw twitter about it <laughs> isn't that reading these days though <laughs> i guess so i'm joking um so it looks like international master bryce tiglon is on the offensive to me in this uh, first game here against Daniel Narodinsky. The knight on f5, weak dark squares for Danya. <laughs> yep, I can't disagree. His queen is on h4. Um, he's not holding back at all. That being said, mm. does he actually have a credible attack here? Because... Uh... So he's got the idea of taking on d6. Yep. He does not have the idea of g4. g4 would kick the knight, and when the knight moves, queen f6 would be made. But on g4, Danya still has knight f3 as a resource. Right. So it's not it's not yet an obvious like checkmate to me, mm -hmm. this position. But it looks really good for white. I mean, if Danya right. has to take on f5, then Bryce can capture on h5. Yep, which and... is just what happened. So I guess let's stick to that line. Yeah, then he's going to capture back. And so I guess Danya was trying to say, I don't like you having two pieces pointing to off pointing towards my king i'm gonna trade off right. maybe i'll be able to bring my rook to the g file at some point to be both protective okay. and offensive but yeah i mean this is basically avoiding a knockout right this yeah. is kind of like desperate gm defenses right you're like okay i'm not gonna let the white pieces get to the king side even this move f4 is saying maybe i'll lose this doubled pawn right versus trading on e4 but if i trade on e4 white can bring their knight and their rook to my king so yeah. i'll play f4 maybe i'll lose this pawn but I'll keep things close for now, cover up my king with my rooks, mm -hmm. and play a longer game before I lose. Right. Or before I before I come back with some before, trick. I, I don't think Daniel's there thinking he loses. I think most GMs no, playing yeah. 2300 is like, I'm just going to pull this off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm definitely saying that wrong. The idea of like slowing down a loss is that you're giving your opponent more chances to blow it. Because, okay. I mean, it's... It, the defensive strategy is you're not is you're gonna somehow not lose a certain percentage of the time. Right, so. right. Okay, I, I buy that explanation yeah. more. Um, which so I, which begs the question in this position: How does White continue? I guess White's plan here should be: How do I bring more pieces into the attack? He just took off one of my major pieces that was holding the position together. So mm -hmm. if I were White, I'd try to think which of my pieces can be better placed. So obviously, the first you look at is the bishop on f1. He's defensive, yeah. but he doesn't need to be defensive right now. No, there's no there's no call for <laughs> there's it. There's no call but for duty there, yeah. With the pawn on e4 firmly blockaded, that bishop, like, I I always want my students to look for their piece that's not doing anything and try and improve their worst piece. Okay. But I don't think that bishop is realistically going to be improved. The better chance is that this knight comes to f4. Right. On c3, it was limited by the c6 pawn mm -hmm. pretty heavily. So knight e2 was the, the main move I was considering, other than something like queen h4. Which, trying to which makes sense, and this is continuing with the plan that you pointed out of how do I improve my piece? So he decided to improve the knight instead, as well as bringing another piece into the attack here to replace his uh, former twin that just got removed there. Yeah. He had to think about it for a while, because it allows this move f3. So now black won't lose the pawn on f4, right? His right. alternative would have been some move like queen h6 or something, trying to win that pawn um oh yeah, yeah now this pawn won't be lost because if white takes on f3 rook g8 is going to be 
pretty solid for black. Yeah, let, um, let me just I, play I, it out I, on the board to show how scary yeah, it is. here it comes. White just took. Oh, so. God. Okay, I don't have to play it out on the board. It's actually going to be played on the board. Yeah, white's, white's playing it out. Um, I don't think that was well, I don't think that was the right choice here. Black's going to get some solid chances here, according to my calculations, because on rook g8, mm -hmm. you can't play knight g3, rook g3. Uh, um, you can't play king h1, queen f2. Right, so you you got you can't play so rook g3 play. because he takes here and it's pinned. I'm just slowing it down a little to show the yep. variations. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what other what other what other options than knight so g3? Bishop g2 is like the only move that's not gonna lose. Yeah, because if you move the king, then you're dropping the pawn on f2. So yeah, but I think black's oh, super gosh. active here oh, gosh. and may have time to just double rooks. Oh, sorry, he played bishop g2. I confused my analysis for the move that actually happened. It happens to all of us at the start, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he played bishop g2. Um, okay, so he played the best best line here that you suggested. Yeah. So can black just double up his rooks? That tends to be the usual way to continue an attack here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking he probably has time to uh, to double rooks on the G file, but Danya's thinking about it for a bit. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's a little bit down on time, but so if, if he he's... sees alternatives to rook G six, then it makes sense to think a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised he didn't play it right away. Maybe he thought something else was interesting, but he has it now, and he's still managing his time relatively well. Yeah, he might have just been looking at the difference between rook G six and rook G seven. It might have mm -hmm. been. It might have been that that simple. I don't know. Yeah, fair. Um, maybe like rook g6, knight f4, he was wondering about. So um, we'll see. Also, but um, yeah. let's let's click around some other games in this match. We've got um, another strong GM, Gabriel Sargisian, playing for the Sluggers, and he's in an end game against uh, Andrew Hong. Okay, what what is his username? Andrew Hong's name is Roaring Seawolf. Got it. And also, yeah, it seems like the my uh, scoreboard on the stream isn't updating, so I'm going to quickly fix that, okay. and maybe you could explain what's going on here. What's then. going on in yeah. this position here. So um, it looks like Andrew is ahead of pawn for very, very minimal um, compensation at the moment. Um, I, I don't have time to say whether or not he should have traded rooks. I don't know for sure, mm -hmm. but... Um, his bishop on b2 is a little bit bad right now, um, but his pawn structure has healthy and he's up a pawn. So right. overall, seems like he should be pretty okay here. Maybe his plan is to go rook b8 since he kept the rooks. Um, there's still going to be a couple moves here where things are kind of concrete. Oh. Um, basically figuring out whether or not black traps the bishop on p2 or, or you know somehow like wins something right. while the bishop's extricating itself. Like, I think there's a key variation that goes, you know, knight c5, rook b6, knight a4, rook b4, knight b2, rook b2, rook c3. And then Sargisian can draw on the king side in the rook end game. Okay, I just caught up to you. Scoreboard yeah. is back. Oh, yeah, cool. Scoreboard's back. And we also have a um, result from the the board one between... Uh, okay. So Wang Hao from uh, okay. the C Seattle Slugger. Sorry, not from Seattle Sluggers, from uh, SF Mechanics won his game. SF Mechanics yeah. won his game. So the Mechanics have their first lead of the season, 1-0 in, in a match. <laughs> yep, which is kind of expected for the board one. The board one who's over 2,700 to win that game. Yeah, well, I guess we missed that. We missed that one because um, the other games were pretty exciting. Speaking of board ones, let's check on Hikaru's game because okay. it wasn't Has looking like a Hikaru game, here? and now it's it's starting Ooh. to look more like a Hikaru game. Now it's looking more like Hikaru. <laughs> He's still down yeah. a pawn, but my goodness, look at those pieces! Look at those pieces! Right. Um, well, as I said, he's going to play B four here. I'm certain. Yeah, and that makes things even worse for White. I think. Right. White is uh, totally tied up in this position here. His rook is tied to protect the b3 pawn. His knight was tied to protect d4, on which mm -hmm. he just said, it's fine, I'm probably going to lose that pawn anyway. Yeah. Oof. And Hikaru won't even let him get that piece out. <laughs> right. It looks like he might have to try and maneuver something with knight g2, which is Ugh. what he's doing. But yeah, yeah, it's not a pretty move, but he Amazing. has to do something. Amazing. Whatever Hikaru did there for several moves, um, it has successfully um, confused the young player. And uh, this is, as I said, going to be 
a position where even though you were playing against Hikaru, you got to be disappointed to lose this as as, as, as white. white. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I mean, so that'll even up the match for Seattle. Yep. Um, okay, so I guess I mean, it may seem early for me to call this, but I mean, white just white doesn't seem like they're ever going to be able to move their pieces. So right, and uh, how can yeah, white's pieces are way too active here. I just imagine that black is going to be able to pick up an extra pawn. And mm -hmm. after he does, he's just crushing. Yeah, so this first round is probably all going to come down to the craziest of the four games, which is between Bryce Tiglin and Daniel Naroditsky. Because looking at looking at uh, Sargisian's game, mm -hmm. he's traded off those two queenside pawns while Andrew was extricating his bishop. Right. That concentrates the battle to one side of the board, three on two. Sargisian is such a strong player. I would be surprised if Andrew could outplay him in this end game. Right. So this and one should be a draw then. Um, that would be my guess. Yeah, I, I doubt that. I mean, Andrew Maybe. has three pawns, obviously. Uh, yeah. Sargisian is a strong opponent, but I don't think that he'll lose this position any, in no. any way. Yeah. Andrew could mess up if he moves his king to the queen side here. Which, but, which of course, he doesn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> Guys, if, if he, he wants if another he... Hikaru-like tragedy. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. He wants to keep his king close to his pawns, make sure that he's still defending them so he doesn't lose them. Yeah. So until other games heat up, maybe we should uh, be looking at this game between Naroditsky? Bryce and Naroditsky. Yep, you read my mind. I'm right back at it. Um, so Nar Daniel did double up his rooks on the G file, which makes sense. Uh, yeah. White is actually Bryce better. Has well. Yeah, Bryce has defended well. Um, I'm going to just scroll back a little bit to see what happened after rook G7. So White continued by bringing his knight in to defend the bishop. He moved his pieces on a better square, like we were saying earlier. Black played queen c7, so it mm -hmm. makes sense that he wants to transition his queen to potentially support an attack on the king side here. King h1, yeah, it looks like he wanted out to of the pin. double rooks and was afraid of rook takes d6 and felt like he had to take time out to prevent rook takes d6. Yeah, good point. He couldn't double right away because then the rook would have taken on d6, so that's also why he played queen c7. King h1, rook dg8, and queen h4. Okay, so queen h4 yeah. is an interesting looking move. Yeah. Well, this is so tense. I'm thinking the time may be a factor here, right? The right. 30 seconds versus a minute 30. Because mm -hmm. um, this seems a very tense game. So. Yeah. And if you're in a tense game like this and you're getting under attack, Sometimes one of the best strategies is just make sound moves. It doesn't have necessarily have to be the best move. Just make sure you're not putting yourself in a complicated position where you might blunder. Yeah. So he, that's that's what he's doing. He's defending it well. So I guess Bryce's plan would be to eventually play f4 and bishop f3. Yeah. Or even f4 and f5. Somehow to start, deal with those rooks, which are more active than his at the moment. Right. So Danya comes up with queen g7. That will keep white from untangling the g-file. I mean, what's white going to do? Tuck the queen on h2 maybe here? Queen f4? Right. Queen g7? Queen h2 to defend the g-file maybe? Yeah, that would be quite the countermaneuver. But if he, if, uh, you know, Bryce sees that in his 20 seconds, oh, oh, he did. He played queen f4. Um, actually. I wonder if he had any other option. Yeah, I mean, queen f4 looks nice either way. <laughs> Well, props are finding that with 15 seconds on the clock, if that was yeah. the only way. Yeah, 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 I agree. Um, I think here Danya might play d5, because otherwise his d6 pawn dies. I mean, I don't know what else what else you would want to do. Right. d5, okay. So he has to protect it in one way or another, and he's not going to bring the rooks to d8 or move them away from the attack. So that makes sense. Um, yeah. Does Unless he? he can he, can he just ignore oh. it and go for the attack anyway? Queen well, h6. He's down to twenty seconds himself as well now. Uh oh. Okay. What would you say? White's odds of pulling off any the upset? Any? I'm gonna just say any 50, upset 50? here. Fifty fifty. That's pretty good odds. Something. Okay. Well, now I like rook d3. Um, I, I'm guessing that's why he moved f4. I keep wanting to take the pawn on d6. I don't know if I'm <laughs> oh, you, you just want to go grab oh, the pawn? he fell for rook g2. He fell for rook g2. That was Danya's threat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that that was nice. You go for some type of tricky threat there when your opponent is under five 
Yeah. Second. Now Danya needs to avoid Rook D8 checkmate at some point back rank on his. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I guess your move taking D6 was like, like here taking on E4 hard. would be the blunder. Taking on E4, that's how you lose. Oh come on, we're gonna give Daniel some credit. He's not taking on E4 here. If, if he does, <laughs> I will, uh, you know, eat my hair. No, just kidding. Six, five, four. What's gonna happen? Oh, okay. Well, White took on D5, so no more options. This is actually more complicated than it looks in it's very complicated. in this limited time because Black has to be really careful, like you mentioned, to not get any back rank mate attacks. It's a very, very tense position for the moment. Yeah. Just I really don't know what's gonna happen. Wow. Okay. I, I I cannot evaluate this. Four seconds, three seconds, one second, going back and forth. Oh my goodness. This is looking good. This is looking good. The rook is coming to G7. Rook G7, maybe? Well, now he has at least a draw. Oh yeah, he's doing great. Daniel offered him because... a draw. Daniel offered him a draw. Take it, don't flag. Okay, sorry, sorry. Wow, yeah. Uh, I'll try to what contain is, my mic. What is happening here? He's going to sack on D7, I think, with the bishop. I like it. Bryce I is think it's headed for to a draw. Win. It, it is definitely headed towards. Okay, now Black has a perpetual. I think. Yeah. White's king doesn't have anywhere to escape. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. That was intense. Oh, as long as they don't flag, I mean, they could still. Either of them could still flag randomly. Not Bryce. He's playing fast. That's smart. Okay, draw by repetition. Ooh. Do you ever so I think? think... That... I was gonna, yeah. gonna say that offering your opponent a draw when they have two, three seconds temporarily distracts them. Maybe they might flag, or is that me just? Huh, I've never, I've never done that. I think if they just keep moving. Well, you haven't done that because you're very polite, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say that means the match will end two two, but somehow Andrew seems to be winning against Sargisian. Okay, let me look. I don't know how he could have outplayed Sargisian. Are you kidding me? How did it? Yeah. So last time we looked here, he had three pawns versus two. Uh, bishop versus a knight, and obviously the rooks were still on the board, and he managed to convert that. Did Sargisian blunder? Uh, Essentially, there's no way not to win this position for white, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know of any way not to win this. And and the reason why David is saying that is, I mean, if black, if white trades off rooks, he's winning, and otherwise, he just has too much support from his bishop and rook to block off any potential threats that he needs to help with his pawn push over here. Yeah, so plenty he has enough time to do this as well. Ooh, Alexei Serana is in action. The the kangaroos are kicking off their match. Okay. Uh um, do you have a, a game hackers. you want to look at? Uh has Hikaru well, won yet? Yeah, Hikaru won. Okay. Yeah. Um let's see. Let's see. I'm clicking around with them. I mean Serana is playing black. Uh, his his name is Mishanik, okay. and white is Soggy Cheese. Got it. I'm there. Um, Soggy that's... Cheese. How do you... Oh, I was about to say that this was one of your team players, but it's from San Jose, not SF, so... That's right. No pressure there. I was going to say. <laughs> Suspicious Yeah, it's always name. cool to see how, how GMs handle certain positions that you see often in that you see often in your own games and don't really know how to handle. So here White's got that pawn on C5 and the outpost on E5. He's really trying mm -hmm. to cramp black. And uh, I think it'll be cool to see how Serana handles it. Yeah, I agree. So it seems like the first part of his plan is improving the position of his bishop. So he prepared G6 to place it back on G7 in Fianchetto. Um, yeah. He will have moved his bishop around quite a bit this game to put it on G7. Yeah, you know, people may be wondering why he couldn't just take on e5 twice yeah. on the previous move, and that was right. because of bishop h7 check at the end, and then queen h5 check picking up the piece on e5. So um, Soggy Cheese had a had a nice little tactical trap there. Yep, and I just um, played it out on the board to quickly show this nice combination, this cute little puzzle rush. Okay, so that's why he continued with g6 instead which also yes. stops that threat of bishop h7. So a6 from black. So Serana's not trying to crack white's pawn structure, which means it looks like R Soggy Cheese is currently up a pawn and has c5 and e5 defended. Right. 
I mean, that is a fair analysis. I just keep thinking that Serana must have seen something here. Yeah. But from, if we weren't looking at who the players were, we were looking just at the board, much easier to favor white here. But I came here to find out how to defend this with black. But you will. But you will. He's going to figure <laughs> out some, you know, sneaky way to unscramble from this position. Yeah. He'll say, the first thing you must have is patience. You must have patience. Let me show you my plan instead of just like, that's why you can't defend this as black because you want to play B6 or A5 right away. Exactly. Patience. Well, white is playing this really well. He's just continuing to improve his position. Rook B1 makes sense. I'm guessing he'll consider A4 and... No, B5 not right away because the C pawn hangs, but at some point he'll be able to make some type of pawn break on the queen side. Because if he's able to trade his C-pawn, then he'll just be up a pawn that's not doubled, which is better than being up a pawn that is doubled. Yeah, sure is. Um, do you want to look sure at the is. game between, uh, oh, Christian Kirilla and Anton Smirnov, so the Count and Anton? Right, we've got a GM versus GM matchup already in round one. Yeah. Um. Wait, yeah. how is that happening? How is one of these GMs aboard? Oh, that's... That's because uh, Trilla is on board three for the hackers. They've got a three okay. GM lineup, it looks three like. Three GM lineup. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so somewhere here. So is that king? They've also, mm -hmm. somewhere here they've got, but I'm not seeing, there it is, Azoria. Yeah, somewhere here they've got another GM playing, which is got the Azoria, who's their board too. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, well, I really like Christian's position here. Mm -hmm. So he has this nice little pin going on with the knight yeah. on f6. Black hasn't had the chance to castle yet, even though he has these two really active bishops. Um, the queen is pointing towards the d4 pawn, so that's a pretty scary threat. If black takes on d3, then white brings his knight, helps it, and comes out to develop. I think yeah. this is... It looks like Smirnov's in need of a really good move or maybe two really good moves at the same time. Yes. Like, <laughs> hey, I'm just going to move twice here real quick. Yeah, seems fair. Seems fair. He's about to crack on B7, C6, and E4. Right. And at the moment, material's equal. It's not like he's like grabbed a piece and got behind in development. Right. It, like, if he drops even a pawn here, then he's basically busted, and it looks like he's th threatening to lose you know, a piece on C6 pretty much. Yep. Uh, so what does he even do here? Yeah, that is a question that I would like to rephrase back to you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, is there any way to... Def okay, so he just played for us, which just loses a pawn straight up yeah. on b7. Maybe yeah, he didn't have he's a good move. b7, c6, and e4 in one move. Wait, for like... but isn't he just... No, okay, sorry. It's, it's I mean, I'm sure one bad. thing he was calculating was b5, knight takes knight on c6. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, pawn takes a4, knight d8. I don't think it's great for black, right. but he might have the move a3 at the end as some kind of amazing resource. I, I, I do um, think I like that it. position better than the current one where he's keeping his queens on the board with his king in the center and just letting white take on b7 straight up here. Yeah, now White's thinking about it before taking on B7. Right. So maybe he's also considering just taking on E4 because right. that's like a good pawn too. Exactly. <laughs> it lets the pieces out. Also, Mr. Squiggles, thank you for subscribing with a tier one sub. And Crazy Coffee Man is asking, Kirilla isn't on the St. Louis team. Well, that's a good question to ask because he, he does live in St. Louis and he does a lot of things with the St. Louis Chess Club. But he was also in the Bay Area for a while. So you can you can be from multiple places. Yeah, he was in the Bay Area for over three years, yeah. and he worked for Bay Area Chess, which is mm -hmm. the uh, Chess in the Schools program that sort of organizes and sponsors the hackers. So he worked for them for uh, several years. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do you want to look at either of these lines? D takes E four, Knight takes B seven. Sure. Let's see what happens after Knight B seven. Yeah, this one looks like the more fun line to play. Um, so I, I think either queen b8 or queen e7 seems to make sense here for black. Yeah, and my first thought would be that queen b8, knight c5 looks amazing for white. Right, so let's so, go with queen d7 let's then. Let's go with queen e7. Mm -hmm. we don't... Knight b7 was just played, so okay. I think we're headed there. Queen e7 was just played, so we were just giving you guys like a very tiny... <laughs> 
preview. Yep. Ten seconds into the future. Exactly. Consider now, you know, we're catching up with the present. Sometimes David's mind moves too fast. We're just a little bit ahead. <laughs> Just just moments ahead. All right, so now Black's idea is to play like knight d4 next. Mm -hmm. um, kick the queen away, get the knight into position, start working on maybe trapping the knight on, on b7. Right, right, that makes sense. So if white wants to just sit comfy, he could move his queen to get out of the way of this future pin threat. Maybe he has something more interesting, like trying to take another pawn and be a little bit greedy there. I don't know. On e4. Yeah, on e4, just just take yeah. it. But then, like you said, knight d4 comes and it's a oh, little it's, bit more it's tricky. It's tempting. I like to have extra pawns, right. but I calculate pawn takes e4, knight d4, queen c4, defending e2, bishop to b5, and then I say this was not a good one. Yeah, yeah, I don't like this too much. Um, yeah, so throw that pawn back into the sea and and fish for a different one. Yep, yep. Okay, uh, so bishop e3 occurs to me as a developing move that also tries to deal with the situation of the knight on b7 like i'm trying to start controlling c5 mm -hmm. maybe play rook c1 at some point as well if i need to yeah i like it coming up with a long-term plan here and if the knight ever moves the white queen has a ton of spaces to retreat and get out of the d7 threat so yeah we'll either go to we'll either go to d1 to defend the e pawn or as i say that he took on e4 so he took on e4 yeah, here it comes. Oh, the gosh. maximum craziness. Well, I'm curious what's going to happen when you're lying. Oh, okay. There's another interesting position. Yeah. Whenever I see a queen on the king side and the king castled in that king side as well, I go straight to it. Um, okay. The game between Grandmaster Zavid Izoria and International Master Bobby Chang. So between the, right. the uh, Australia kangaroos and the San Jose hackers. Yeah, and Bobby Chang is rated 2,500 plus Fide, so he's a... Uh, Nighthouse is asking how the kangaroos are doing. Well, they're leading the pack, which is even more incredible yeah. because they're in the same pack as the Chengdu pandas. Yeah. So just putting that out there. Okay. All right, so zoria has got his queen in. She <laughs> even captured a pawn in H4 on her way in. So that's like the best way to get your queen yeah. in front of the opponent's king. It's like um, a holiday versus a paid holiday, you know? The pawn, oh, we'll take it. It's the better of the two. Yeah. So it looks like Azorius sacrificed an exchange mm -hmm. just on A8 as we were clicking over here. Yep, the knight took on A8 um, over there. And he thought it was he have worth any more it. firepower for this king side? Well, the, so the knight and the queen are clearly not enough. Oh, he just retreated his he queen. Retreated. So I'm guessing the answer to that was no, because was what no. else would he bring? The pawns aren't going to come fast enough. The bishop doesn't have any serious threats. Right. The queen is eyeing the b7 pawn. I think potentially his sacrifice was unsound. Yeah, I mean, queen b7 was going to be a major problem. So he needed yeah. like immediate attack, and neither of us sees any piece that could magically get there. Right. Or it was time to backpedal after his exchange sack. Yep. So, um, hmm. H4 was a short stop. That's not uh, that's not so amazing for him. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I, I think I prefer white here. Is it too soon to say that? Um, no, that's fair. I mean, when somebody when somebody sacks material to attack and then retreats on the next move, you're allowed to say exactly. That's not looking like yeah. you're like what you're looking for. Yeah, I remember playing a lot as a kid, and I'd get so nervous for those sacrifices, and once I'd see that attacking piece retreat i'd oh finally take a deep breath you know it's, yes. it's okay i didn't miss anything it was them now not me. me and my now me and my extra material can get really happy over here exactly exactly <laughs> oh okay yeah. um so l let's go check out another game then because i do yeah. think bobby is just better off here yeah i mean I, zviad should still have some chances it's like an exchange mm -hmm. for a pawn there's still pieces on the board but i think we're both gonna say it favors yeah. bobby pretty heavily yeah and we can always come back to this game i think there's a couple of them that are how about mauricio flores versus craig hilby we've got two queens oh. getting cozy next to the opponent's king sorry i went to fidel corrales instead there oh, we go now i'm yeah, back mauricio. with you oh okay this is a very interesting position good call yeah 
if both kings get checkmated at the same time, it'll be even more exciting than one king getting checkmated. Yes! Can we create a new variant where if you checkmate your opponent right after you get checkmated, you both win, you know? So... You each get a full point? Yes! <laughs> it's yeah. not even like, it's not a draw like a stalemate, it's just like, we both won. Exactly, and you go up in the standings together. What a world that so would be. Mauricio is still down a piece, even after he just collected an exchange with bishop f6 check. So that means right. before bishop f6 check, he was down a whole rook. Well, you better hope he's the first one here yeah. to get to the opponent's king. So, but it looks like if he takes time out to capture the knight on c7, black will take time to take on f2, and right, he will be, he will be mated first. Wait, and am I didn't Mar Mar didn't Marisha Flores lose his first game for some reason? I yeah, I, I think he did. He did actually. right? Yeah, I think he was the one who lost to um the fourth. No, not the to uh, Joshua Joshua Shang. Got it. To the to the D pawns, to so the past D pawns coming down right, the board. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So, queen to D eight, threatening mate on H eight. Oh, if the only defense is to move the king back, then he's got time to take the knight with check. Right. Oh, that's oh, that's that a really a nice tactic. Move. Yeah. Okay. So oh, Mauricio, now I'm believing in you. Now you might get there before Black. Yeah, he, he found the proper technique here. Uh, wait, is Black losing here, or is it a stalemate? Sorry, is it a perpetual that White's going for? Um, they could very well be losing. Yeah, Queen D6, okay. So, yeah, if he has time to... To bring yeah, in his bishop, bishop e6, which he does, because if queen yeah. takes f2, yeah. you have queen h1 queen or queen g8. Yeah. Well, that was slick. I mean, this guy was down a rook when we first clicked here, and now he's recovered all his material in like eight moves, all forcing moves, exactly. and he's mating. We needed a counterexample to a sacrifice that does work, right? Because we showed what happens when it doesn't. When it does, you just win, so... uh Made, made in one here after queen king yeah. h6 yep oh this is so funny you know he'll be took on f2 to kind of say like hey if we were playing that variant was variant then we could checkmate on h8 and g1 at the same time or whatever yeah yeah exactly <laughs> almost there okay but that's um that's a nice bounce back from mauricio mm -hmm. um let's see actually he must be their board two yeah he's the board two for minnesota today yeah yeah he is um, and are, have I been, has the score been updating? Okay. It is updated now. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's see, what game do we want to look at next? Um, let's see. We haven't seen Penguins game for a while. Grandmaster Andrew right. Tang. Looks like Serana found a way to bust out, but, um... I don't know, maybe we should look at Wang Hao for a moment since we missed him entirely in the first round, or we could look at Hikaru. Good point. People often just want to see, you know, 27, 28 hundreds play. That is fair. Um, so let's let's see. Let's take a quick look at Wang Hao's position and then go to Hikaru next. Okay, so Wang Hao is pretty ambitious here. He has a really nice position. His knight is eyeing the C7 square. Um, potentially black can avoid that by taking the knight on d5 his queen yeah. is on h5 which doesn't look like it has any threat right away but if black castles that's all of a sudden a really different story because his bishop is eyeing h6 he has ideas of f2 f4 what do you, what do you think about the position here for white it looks like we should expect on um, black to take on d5 at some point mm -hmm. and then he's going to have the double isolated pawns but the better bishop, maybe a rook on c6. Yeah, and a rook on c6 is looking mighty fine. And although the queen on h5 is not like generating a mating threat, she is on a light square, which is the right color squares to be on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and she is sort of like you know taking up space. It's better than being on d8, I guess I would say. It's a little. It's you know even if there's not a mating attack. It seems like an improvement to me. It is, and just a funny comment before it's gone. Apparently, Hikaru's going nuts. The front desk keeps calling him about noise complaints, so he unplugged his phone. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait, he's playing. Wait, he's playing chess. Why is he going nuts? He's get. Apparently, he's getting 
uh, away with yelling. So that's okay. That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. All right. You can watch Hikaru in his stream. That's right. We should say that Hikaru is streaming his own games. So yeah. anybody who wants to leave us, um, you can see what Hikaru thinks about his own games. Yeah. Or maybe even more entertaining, you can watch him like screaming and tearing a phone out of the yeah. wall. But we know you guys don't want to leave us. But you can have both tabs open and we'll forgive you from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, yeah. he's in Gibraltar where it's 3 a.m. He's getting excited. He's trying to play. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. The thing is, already two players have played from Gibraltar in the Atlantic Division. Right. Yvonne Saric and Wesley So, and both of them did great. So scored four and zero at three in the morning. That's that's um, pretty good. When I was doing commentary, I was yeah. looking at the Marseille migraine, and MVL was not having his best results. He was also playing from Gibraltar. But it's yeah. good to know that there's both sides of these, so... Yeah. <laughs> hey, and uh, we see everything expected happening here. The yeah. trade on D5, the, the rook on C6. C6. Mm -hmm. The other rook will come to C1 probably. And then if black spends too many pieces going over to defend the queen side, there's some scenario where you could play bishop h6 and attack the king side. It's possible. Right, right. Oh, man. I will say that watching these games has really made me miss classical chess. But why don't we take a quick look at Hikaru's game as well? Yeah, I think Wang Hao might play queen g4 here to win control of the c Oh, queen g4. Nice. And then and just F5, trade off? queen g6. If f5, queen g6, and if queen g4, hg4, you know, black can never do anything about those doubled pawns. That's and, that's uh, true. He, yeah, Wang Hao would have a much better endgame here, which I'm sure he could convert. All right, let's see what Hikaru is doing here. Um, so Hikaru is playing against Andrew Hong, mm -hmm. who had the the key point for the mechanics last round against Sargisian. Okay. And it looks like he, this is a Hikaru a position. Well defended <laughs> extra pass pawn on c6. Yeah, right? uh, yeah. I, I love how you were talking about Hikaru position. So from now on, if it's a Hikaru position, he's steamrolling. Yeah. On a scale of zero to Hikaru position, what would you rate mm -hmm. this for White? This is like standard standard Hikaru. I would say I think um, he's firmly in control. It feels. Very tough to be black here. Yeah. Oh my god. It doesn't look like the phone calls are slowing Hikaru down at all. If anything, the they're time. firing him up. He's just getting more oh, powerful no. with every phone call. Come on, front desk. <laughs> Stop firing him up. He's already good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So, oh man. Oof. That, I mean, it's a nice... That knight is well placed on h4. Let me just say that. That is well yes. placed. You know when there's exceptions to the rule? Sure, a knight on the rim is usually dim, but not when it's Hikaru's playing it and it's this position. Yeah. It... Actually, in all in all structures with G takes F6, Yeah. Um, there's like the G oh, takes sorry. F6 Karo Khan. There's like a number of openings where one plays G takes F6. There's some French defenses mm -hmm. where when white trades on G5, black takes with the G pawn instead of a piece. In all of those structures, h4 is quite a good square for a knight. Got it. Because you've got two doubled f pawns right. that you could be attacking, and there's no g pawn to kick you away. Very nicely explained. Um, yeah, I, I love when you put it into the context of what, what type of structures do you generally see things like this for. So, yeah, thanks for doing that. Yeah. The clock is also a classic Hikaru position of like 11 and a half minutes against six, you know, just double the opponent's time, casually winning at the same time. Yeah. Um, so he's very comfortable. This is much easier yeah. to play than... Uh, but uh, speaking of people who are looking less comfortable, let's quickly look yeah. at the Daniel Narodisky and Sandpacer game because... Wow, Bishop H3 just was came just through. played. What? <laughs> what is going on there? Well, that's a surprise move. Yeah, and I he think he's, he's probably just losing, but it's worth looking at. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe Danya saw it coming because of Bishop G6, Queen G4 uh, also winning a piece, right? right? So he may have known that this is sort of what was on the menu next. Yeah, yeah. If Jason continues with Knight F4, sort of like quasi-attacking with right. the sacrifice. He just has Queen G4. Queen, Queen G4 and take the Knight on H4. So I don't think we're going to see like a, a very powerful follow-up attack here. Right. The only other um, piece you could try to bring is the Queen, because obviously you're yeah. going for Queen G6, but... I mean, Queen G4 works here too, right? Yeah, I was going to say maybe you want to play King B8, but then Queen G4 again attacks two pieces. Yeah. Um, so maybe Queen F7 at least defends one of those pieces. But then after Queen G4, what are you playing? Knight G6, I guess. Yeah, I like Knight G6 also here. 
but in this case, Daniel is just up okay. or full rook. So okay, okay. We did not want Queen G four. That move makes sense. That move could almost qualify as annoying, right? H five. Oh, nice. Okay. Um. I guess it's annoying, but if, again, if Daniel's up a rook and there's no killer attack, I think. Oh, he's not even up a piece, he's up a rook, He's up huh? a full rook. I don't know how this happened, but he was up an exchange, I guess, and then uh, Jason just sacrificed it. Okay. Jason, you so... is playing chess like me. I approve. That's hilarious, Reverend. He's <laughs> And uh, you, some people are saying he's one of your friends. Well... It's great to see you guys supporting him here. This is yeah, not the best position, him. but we're going to see him yeah. have some better better games. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, Jason Yu is a player that that we've um, commented on in... Uh, Koenig, the... yeah. Koenig together, right? Right. He had the dabbing Pikachu, as you may recall. I do recall. It was super cute. Yeah. So, um, so we're we're fans of Jason as well, but the fact is that if you play in this league on board four... Yeah. With a few exceptions, you're going to take a bunch of like licks. Like you're going to get beat several times before things start going well for you. Right. Um that's just the reality of how strong this league is. I mean, you can be you can be one of the most talented 10-year-olds or 12-year-olds in the world, but if you start playing against Hikaru, yeah. and and uh you know Wang Hao and Alexei Serana, it's there's still a long road before you're competing equally. Yeah, exactly. Um, so why don't we take a look at another board that's maybe a little more asymmetrical than this one, so to say. Okay. Let's see. Azoria's trying to get an attack going still. Still down in exchange, but uh, his queen's back to h4. Okay, so that's nice. Finally, the queen has come back! Yes! H4. <laughs> We've been waiting for this, you know? Yeah. It's like a superhero movie where he... It's kind of tempor temporarily wounded after the first battle. He goes back yeah. up, sews up his spidey suit, back on h4 sure. with his sidekicks, yeah. the G and knight and bishop. Yep. This guy, he has three sidekicks just because he's he, got three he sidekicks. Needs it. he it's needs way it. better than one, yeah. as it turns out. <laughs> exactly. Anybody who plays chess would know that. They'd be like, if I'm going to go into some situation with 100 bad guys with machine guns, I don't think one sidekick is really... Exactly. See, if, if chess watch. players were superheroes, I feel like the movies would be a lot more believable. Yeah. Yep. It'd be like, I'm going to call the police, and I'm going to bring 10 friends. And... Yeah, exactly. I'm not going on out on my own just to prove myself. Why would I do that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so Queen of Three was just played here. Um Count the pieces in the warehouse. This mission is bound to fail. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, wait, what happens? Can Black just keep pushing pawns here? He could. He could. The G-pawn could advance. Could advance. Um, I don't think taking makes sense. The G-pawn could even trade. It could even trade because at the end you get knight takes d4 for Black. Right, and then right. You've collected a lot of stuff. Bishop takes. Or, Bishop takes. I wonder... I wonder if there would even be some tactics with like pawn takes f4, bishop takes f4, knight takes d4. Oh, taking right away. I was just look. I was just first showing what happens after the trade. After trading everything, yes. of course. Yeah. So this will. It's just anytime you have a variation. Mm -hmm. This is this is the lesson I always tell everybody. Anytime you've got a variation, just play the same moves in a different order, and you generate an extra variation, and that's how you that's... generate lines in your calculations. That's great advice. I'm gonna do that right now. We're gonna generate lines. Money. We're not gonna play <laughs> f5. We were gonna look at knight takes d4, um, yeah. which is also tricky. I think you have to take on d4, and then yeah. bishop takes. So Izoria did what you wanted with G4. Oh, okay. He said, maybe I can win a pawn. Maybe there's some good tactics. But if I play G4, mm -hmm. I can play to trap this bishop on H2 in perpetuity, right? Right. Um, if he played knight H4 to F3 at some point, mm -hmm. which Bobby just prevented. And but if his knight got to F3, that bishop could never get out. That's true. And then he's going to say, well, now I can play the whole game. You know, actually, I'm up material if the bishop on h2 or g3 can never move. Right. And I'd like to add that this position seems more difficult to play for white than the one where he trades off into some type of endgame where it's rook versus knight, especially since he has 20 seconds yeah. or so. Probably Azuria wants to keep the pressure on. Oh, that's a good point. With low on time, this is so much harder to play than something where yeah. the board opens up, everything's traded off, right. you 
you only have one rook to move and you know you should keep moving your rook yeah <laughs> in yeah that end game. no i totally agree oh and apparently Sor Sor serrano won he managed to swindle a rook and pawn ending so the way i'm supposed to handle those positions where i can't move my pieces is to wait around and swindle a rook and pawn ending apparently you just have to do the serrano method also the MVL swind swindler oh, smoothie. His final move was pretty was pretty sweet. I don't know if you can just click to the final move of of soggy cheese yeah, versus Yeah, I just quickly clicked on it. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He it's just like took the on F three. So good. Yeah. And then like F three. Yeah, he can't take back because of E four attacking the king and the rook feels bad, man. For yeah. not for Serana though. Right. Um, okay, do do we want to go back to the game? I feel like Serrano was tested more than normal by, by the Soggy Cheese, so props to yeah. another fourth board putting up a fight. Um, Hikaru has won his game. Okay, just came back to that position. Okay, with the, almost a checkmate on the board. Yeah. So his opponent did try and play out to the best of his abilities. Yeah. And Wang Hao is doing exactly the instructive thing that I was sort of envisioning. A lot of people mm -hmm. may not be familiar with how you play those double D pawns and yeah. why that wouldn't just be bad for white. But right. he just played the queen G4 move we talked about. I'm just going to quickly rewind. Right so yeah, queen G4. He took yeah. he took back queen takes G4, H takes G4, um, rook B C8. And I really like that bishop A5 move. He's totally mm -hmm. constricting black's pawn's movement on the queen side here kind of like a boa constricting its prey slowly suffocating it instead of one of those dynamic tactical blow positions yeah given enough time he would have improved his king all the way to e4 as well but right. bryce is bryce is trying to wriggle out bryce is not happy with what's happening he's so he's clawing saying, hey, it off get the star squared bishop off yeah i think i'm not losing a pawn yet to rook c7 right. or rook c6 at the end right so but but just trading off and playing your rook on c7 looks really scary uh obviously any end games where one guy gets his rooks on the seventh is a little bit yeah terrifying but i think bishop b4 is strong here because if black plays rook b6 you can take on d6 with your bishop i believe okay so you like bishop b4 here and if rook mm -hmm. b6 just Sorry, what was the movie recommended? Bishop you? takes d6 then. Yeah, it makes sense since it's still protected. If the rook takes on c6, he takes back with his other rook. Yeah, this looks pretty terrifying as well. And it looks like e5 is also okay, in trouble. I guess I was wrong because <laughs> he's done something else. Oh, we were both wrong. I said takes d8. Okay. He just played bishop c7. Okay, even different, yeah. more different. Yeah, this is supposed to be a slightly better version of d8 because after the bishops trade and white plays rook c7, mm -hmm. the black rook won't yet be on d8 to defend the d6 pawn. Right. So like bishop c7, rook c7, check king e8. Yep, to protect it's the f7 the same pawn. Position, but no rook on d8 yet. Yeah. Um, to which, can white just go and attack the pawn? Ooh. Oh, look at that move. I didn't even see it coming. Oh my god, that's so nice. G5. Do you like that? Of course, who oh, doesn't man. like that? If H takes, Rook H1, Rook H8. Oh my gosh, what a flex by Wang Hao. I really like this. Oh man, so I that's mean, why he's not going to take. But... G4, huh? <laughs> yeah. He's obviously not going to do anything. But now even if he takes on H6, that pawn is hanging, yeah. right? And by the way, one detail, everybody. If... if... Black had played h5 there, then the right move for white would definitely be g6. Not rook h1, g6, but g6 for white, just opening the seventh rank immediately, mm -hmm. busting up black's oh, king side. Sorry, I was looking at a totally different line. Please, oh, yeah. uh, chat, ignore what I just showed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were saying if you played so h5 Bryce played to rook play g8. g6. Because that played makes h5, more g6. Sense. Yeah. It's, it's a classic thing you want to do is like, it's called broadening the seventh rank, I think. So yeah, it gives you more room to work with with the rooks. Um, okay, so rook to d8 is played. That's reasonable. So he's going to sack the h pawn if white takes on h6. But Wang Hao is not taking on h6. He's still broadening the seventh rank. All right. <laughs> wow. Whoa, the San Jose hackers have three one on the Australia kangaroos. Whoa. That's. Azoria. Azoria must have won his game, or what? Uh, Azoria won his game. Yep. Oh, that's he that's flagged like, his that opponent was... and he had forked his king and queen. So 
he was able to put oh, Bobby Chang man. under enough pressure. That final position, it's dirty, right? His pawn's all the way down to h3. The bishop's yeah. still trapped on h2. I don't know. I, I would need therapy me. after this position as white. <laughs> <laughs> like me last week. Do you want to talk white. about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. So Azoria so... won his game. Um, let's see. Oh. Another game was just finished between uh, Grandmaster Sargissian and FM Jurasek. And uh, okay. yeah, Jurasek. Sargissian has scored a, mm -hmm. a point. So he's he's back on track after his first round loss. That'll be the only upset yep. he gives up today. Um, and that's going to keep the match between the Sluggers and the Mechanics really close, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Mechanics yeah. and the Sluggers, two and a half to three and a half. Let me make sure that my... That is updated. Sorry, yeah, it's three and a half to three and a half, so it's totally tied up right now. Looks like Naroditsky won the position that he was up a rook against Sandpacer. That's a shocker. Um, so that that's reasonable. Yeah. Wang Hao um, is definitely winning this position. His opponent has six seconds. He's yeah. up. Although Bryce saved a probably losing position against Naroditsky last round where he had like five or six seconds on his clock. That makes sense, but after so not Rook B5, I, I, I don't know. I think he he clearly has the... Or maybe he can just grab another pawn on B3 uh, as well. Just bring the king to there too. Yeah. Oof. Black just doesn't that's, have any counterplay. That's evil, Wang How? <laughs> Looks like a lot of bishops pretending to be pawns today. <laughs> That's a good one, Icelandic <laughs> Gambit. Do you want to take a quick look at the game between Grandmaster yes. Jeffrey Siong and FM Anthony He? The, oh, yeah, the I've match... been waiting for Jeffrey to enter today. He's one of the other players I want to keep my eye on. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, so this is the first game we're looking at between the Dallas Destiny and the Chengdu Panda matchup, so this is fun. This is yeah. our second Guccio Piano game. I think this is what the line is called. I know it is because it says on chess.com, but we saw another very cramped position. By the way, I've got a uh, trivia question for you about the pandas. Who is the first free agent to play for this team? To play for the pandas? Well, chat, mm -hmm. let's see you guys answer the trivia. I don't want to give it away knows. because I obviously know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> the pandas... They don't have Dingley Ren today. They're playing a right. different. They're playing a slightly different lineup. In in past weeks, they've played some twenty seven hundred players, and this week they're playing a more balanced three GM lineup with mm -hmm. you know, 26, 26, 25, and uh, and a fourth board who's not rated two thousand, but instead twenty two fifty. And has has um, Anthony He played for the Chengdu Pandas yet? This this matchup. This is his first game here against Jeffrey. Yep, and and he's actually a free agent as well. So we'll see how he That's does. Right. It's interesting to have fourth board free agents. I think Greg said exactly. there was only three or so. So he must be a talented, tricky agent. That's what's really interesting to me, right? Because yeah. a lot of teams won't have that many 2700s so or 2600s or whatever so they'll go looking for like a top gm right to power up their team from the free agent position chung du had they've got ding li ren yu yang yi wang yue um i i can't even remember all the players they have who are like powerhouses right right so they go and they recruit a young 2200 from seattle oh my gosh um, to be there to be their fourth board i'm suspicious so, I, <laughs> secret I'm weapon suspicious. style i'm suspicious they must know about him because one of their 2700s must be his secret coach and yep. then and then he's like well i've got this student who's really good now yeah exactly and i see somebody in the chess.com chat actually saying what anthony's playing on this team this is unbelievable i don't know if unbelievable for anthony or unbelievable that the pandas recruited him but we'll see how he plays and we'll find out shortly um yeah i mean if he's really good then the people who could be upset yeah. i guess would be the sluggers right because right. he would be like local for them and somehow the already final four finishing Chengdu pandas have like purloined him right and so here the queens were traded off you talked a lot mm -hmm. about how white when being the lower rated opponent will get into these more close symmetrical lines that tend to lead to draws what do you think here after the queen trade how would you be feeling as white i think that that often is good for the fourth board if it's kind of like a little bit simpler if there are some trades and stuff mm -hmm. but with all the pieces on the board and a locked position i would actually say that doesn't favor the board force it gives 
the high rated GM more time to slowly outplay them in sort of the strategic phase of the game. Um, so I would say that this position here is not great news for Anthony so far. Okay. Yeah, I'm... Even though it's probably close to equal. Um, but it's still tricky. Um, Black is going to be able to open it up pretty soon. Uh, I mean, F5 seems like the break I'm looking at because it's similar to any kind of King's Indian, Indian structure. That's what you're going for here. I'm not sure when the right time to play it is for Black, but Jeffrey Siong is definitely going to open up this position. Yeah. Yeah, I am um, not an expert on this, so I don't know what Jeffrey's going to do. I was thinking he might want to gain more space with c5, and he played yeah. knight a5, so maybe... And I just switched to the game between maybe Grandmaster Bai Jinshu and uh, International mm -hmm. Master Tidas Stramavicius, because mm -hmm. uh, the International Master has less than two minutes on the clock. Very panda style here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Bai Jin Shi. This is his first game of the uh, season for the Pandas this mm -hmm. year. Um, he's their board three this this round, I think. Um, so that would mean that Stramavicius is board two for Dallas. Yeah. Uh, this looks like a real torture position. I would like to be white. I would really like to leave this commentary right now and have White's position. <laughs> okay, well, I, I can't disagree with you there. White has these two super active bishops, and the only thing that makes them look more active than already controlling these diagonal is uh, comparing them to Black's bishops here. If you look at that poor bishop on c8, he's totally blocked in by his pawns. His twin on e7 is looking a little bit better, but right. uh, he could he could shuffle between f8 yeah, and e7 safely. Exactly, and at least he has <laughs> a little more piece. control. But that's your good piece. Um, <laughs> yeah. Rook d3. This is the kind of position where you play like rook d3 and someone resigns. They're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play this. Please just end my what? misery. Um, yeah. So, okay. I, I don't know what Black's plan is here. He's trying to slowly get into some type of playable position, maybe play Rook D8 here at some point to trade off. Um, so White is putting pressure on A6. The C7 pawn is also very weak. Um, yeah, I guess Rook D8, the potential issue is White trading and playing Bishop C5, trapping the Bishop on D8. And when we were just saying that that was the better Bishop... <laughs> Yeah, I guess he could he could come out of it with f6, so breaking open in the center, and if white takes, he can take back with the bishop. But black will have a terrible pawn structure if that happens. Okay, right. interesting. Some Oh, so there was no square in the fourth rank, so now what he's going to do is play b4, a3, and bishop a7, trapping the rook. Okay, rook a4. Rook a4 also makes sense, yeah, so... What he's yeah. doing right now, chat, he wanted to play bishop a7, trap the rook, but now he's controlling the b4 square. The rook will have nowhere to go. He can try. He can't even make space. Bishop b7 fails because of rook b4. Yeah. He's also threatening rook d4, trapping the bishop <laughs> on d8. Oh my god. This position is Ow. so disgusting Ow. in such a subtle way because you look at yeah. it and you don't expect this level of just destruction in a middle end game position <laughs> yeah sometimes i have positions like this against a gm and i'm still thinking like maybe if i could just if i could just do one thing i could still get out and it's still equal and i can still save the game yeah. and then obviously like the game had been over for like 20 moves <laughs> i just didn't realize it right 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 um so here trade um you want to know something funny he doesn't even have to take the rook doesn't have to he take can it. move his bishop, his white bishop, anywhere, and, and the, the rook, rook is still it. trapped. <laughs> just keep the idea of rook to d8. Okay, he, uh, rook to d4 to d8. He didn't want to be cruel, so he just took the rook. But he could have. <laughs> he could have. Um, okay, so part of me wants to watch this game unfold, just because oh, it's so painful. That's a grim part of you. I think we've seen the the fun and instructive part. Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at another fun instructive yeah. game that isn't just torture. Uh, all right. Um, K 
second, just, just making sure the board is getting refreshed. Let's see. So the pan the pandas have just started their game, so I guess we could look at another game they're playing between Chess Fat Bear, just because it's the best username of all time, uh -huh. Grandmaster Chao Jun, and International Master Cameron Wheeler. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, the queens just got taken off, as as you were saying that. Yep. Um, and now we get to this end game, where you would think that Black's bishop pair and a pawn. Is... would mean an advantage for black, wouldn't you? That is definitely what I would think looking at it right away. I guess, what do we have to consider? That maybe white is going to be able to get a pass pawn of his own with c5. C5, d6. Yeah, c5, d6. At the moment, that's the only counterplay that's showing. Yep. Um, you know, you could think rook e3 to e8 trying to get something going, but mm -hmm. bishop d7 defends that so easily, and there's no further follow-up. Right. And honestly, the same bishop d7 move seems to defend against c5. Pawn takes c5, d6. Yeah, yeah, it does. Bishop d7. So I'm not yet clear what counterplay white does have. So he has to get his knight in. Let's say he tries something like knight d4, right? Mm -hmm. um, because right. at least maybe he's trying to hop to b5 or have the knight closer to the a pawn in case he can do anything. After yeah. knight d4... Well, Great idea. Black has the option of trading, um, uh -huh. but he might want to keep his bishop pair on the board. Ideally, he would like to keep his bishop pair. That's about half of his advantage right. here. So maybe just bishop d7. Trying to queen the a-pawn. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yeah, you could play bishop d7 and trade the other bishop in order to keep the f6 bishop controlling the queening square of your a-pawn. Right, and also with bishop d7, you're helping your rook get to a8 to help support the a-pawn here. Okay, Cameron tried something else. He tried rook b3. So instead of moving the knight, he's activating the rook. The problem mm -hmm. is the knight is basically trapped now, right? Because it... You can't go to d4 anymore. Yeah, I, I liked your idea of moving the knight. But let's see what this what this can do. He wants to come to maybe b6. Definitely. Attack e7. And potentially, if the bishop moves off of c8, he'll have rook a6 at some point to defend against the a-pawn. So at least his rook's going to be very active now. And... Black responds with bishop g4, which mm -hmm. is actually a little surprising. I understand that he wants to activate his rook. I don't see him mm -hmm. trading off that knight in the future, and if that's not what the bishop is doing... I think if rook b6, he might be planning to trade it off and then play rook takes f2. But in general... Oh yeah, that's that's a nice that, one. I mean, I just show it. It's true it. that without some, some you know specific reason, you wouldn't really want to trade your bishop pair right for a knight that couldn't move yeah right? exactly this exactly but, but he may be starting to calculate that the a pawn's getting really close to queening it might be getting concrete where he's yeah, like that makes yeah sense. I and a lot of times when you have those concrete variations like you pointed out that's why it makes sense to go against what's usually some type of you know rule in the middle game end game yeah so bishop g4 so i don't think rook b6 is quite good enough now uh yeah rook, um, rook b6 doesn't seem like it works anymore so what is white gonna do here this is another very difficult to play position even though queens are off the board just like the game we were just looking at you'd expect these types of end games to be easier to play but the pandas are keeping up with a consistent style here. Yeah, I... Uh, hmm, oh, Hikaru's sure playing Daniel Naradisky this round. They just started, but that's a game All we're right. going to be excited about. Right, they're hitting round three, so you're yeah. starting to see some of the top guns exactly. off against each other there. Um, um, what about the game that? between Grandmaster Fidel Corrales and International Master Don John Bryant? They're pretty far along, and yeah. At least in the match, I mean, uh, since they are yeah, yeah. to start first. Yeah, I was wondering exactly, I was going to ask you, like, how's that match going right now? What's the current score? It looks like three and Minnesota a half. has a lead. Yeah, min three and a half to five and a half for Minnesota. Is that what we were expecting? You. I was expecting them to only win by one point, but right. we'll see. But you did, you did predict a win, so that's, that's a good prediction. San Francisco mechanics are closer to Seattle sluggers than we thought, just because SF has... Not had the best start this year, but I know they're going to come back. Don't you worry. 
<laughs> we'll see. That's going to be a close match as well, potentially. But um, this Minnesota match started first. So let's see how Corrales is doing here. Yep. Um, it looks like he's up a pawn. Mm -hmm. And Wait looking at d6, having a look at d6, having a look at maybe knight g5. Hang on, he's not up so, a pawn. Uh, oh no, am I miscounting it? Yeah, you know, because if the, the h pawn was on the uh, d file, it'd be equal pawns. Okay. I guess that's how the pawn so calculation works. They traded works, pawns though. very oddly then. Yeah, they did. It doesn't look like like a normal pawn trade. It's very weird. Okay. Okay, so, oh yeah, he's missing that pawn there. Okay, so... So he's looking at bishop d6 and knight g5. It looks like even with material equal, this is an edge for Fidel. Right. You made it seem like even if black had an extra pawn, maybe that would explain why his pieces are so active. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I, I like this position for him a lot. Even if he doesn't get some type of attack here, which after knight g5... He might. He, he might for sure. He also has things like rook d1 if he needed to. But again, he yeah, just yeah. has so many threats already. Yeah, those black knights need to somehow bounce into action here. Mm -hmm. They need to they need to do a little bit more. Yeah. Than they're doing so far. Well, where would those knights even go? Does knight e5 do anything? Nope. So the rook takes f2 thing has happened. I mean in a different way, but Zhao Jun just traded on f3 and then played bishop d4. Okay, let me go back to that game. Uh, oh, Cameron resigns. Here we go. Whoa. Whoa. But you can see how fast it happened that trading into the opposite colored bishops just allowed him to win. Yeah. It won the, it won the pawn on f2, and it made the a pawn pretty much unstoppable. Yep, yep. Because he had Queening square. Well, that was that was a brilliant strategy by Zhao Jun. Um, that was pretty instructive, huh? Just go trade the knight that's trapped yeah. in order to just win with the dark squared bishop. Exactly, and he had to pay attention to one of the advantages he had in the position, which was that he had a rook on a2 on the uh, second file, eyeing that f2 pawn. How can he attack it again? He wants to play bishop d4. He can't, though, because the knight is attacking. So what does he do? Swaps off that knight and brings his bishop to d4. Very nicely done. All right. Um, yeah. So what else is, um, who else is in this particular match? Um, the Panda match? The Panda match. So. Uh, oh, no, sorry. In the in the Minnesota match, okay. I wanted to see what else there is. We can see how Mauricio um, Flores is doing against Alexi Dreyev okay. since Alexi yeah. is in some time pressure. Is there mm -hmm. a pawn? No. Okay. There are equal pawns here. Equal pawns. Pretty tight position. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks pretty hard for either side to break through right. to me. To have uh, seven pawns in an end game close position, mm -hmm. definitely hard for either side to break through here. Optically, Black's position looks better to me because White's bishop isn't very good, and White has a doubled pawn, and Black has space on the king side right. where you could go like h4, and if things ever trade, you're close to queening. But for Black to ever win, he would have to open a penetration point for his king on the queen side, and I am not don't sure see that either. happening right now. Right. Um, the only he yeah he can't even sacrifice. Sometimes if Black would have a bishop on the dark squares here, he could sacrifice a knight for two pawns or something like that. But that's not an option. Mm -hmm. Maybe a is a four at any point coming? Now he's protecting b four. So Exactly. So the knight on c2 is trying to re restrain it. Mm -hmm. um, knight a6 will allow him to play it, but trading one pawn won't quite be enough. He needs to trade one pawn on b3 and then somehow get in, right? Right. Like attack that pawn, sack a piece on b3 to get his king in something. Yep. Okay, so why don't we come back to this game since it looks... Yeah. Uh, so Jeffrey just beat Anthony He. Okay. Okay, so the Dallas Destiny team defeated the fourth board of the Chengdu Pandas. So now it's one and a half to two and a half for the Pandas in their first first games. So they're going to start the second one soon. Let's see. Well, here's a, here's a tense moment for Alexei Serana of the kangaroos All right. up against uh, Chirilla. 
Um, Just... Mishanek against Got the it. Count. Got it. Found their game. Um, Serana's up a pawn. What? Is this the same That's game one... we were looking at earlier? It's not clear how he ever castles. No, I think this is our first time looking at this. Okay. Right. Yeah, Craig. Yeah. The nice e5 pawn sack by Chirilla. Okay. Looking at okay, just catching so, up here. So, yeah. uh, Christian is really good at playing the Grunfeld. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah, he played this very confidently and decisively. Yep. So queen b3 challenging this pressure against d2. Mhm. Mm so we would expect queen b5. Uh, queen a5, sorry. Okay, yeah, queen a5 here because black doesn't want to trade off. He wants to keep the pressure. That move makes a lot of sense to me. I said b5 because I was already calculating queen a5, queen b5, right. queen c3, right. queen b3 kind right. of thing. Right, right. Maybe going for some type of a perpetual here. Yeah. Actually, it, it is an option. White might try to do that, right? Yeah, okay, it it's like... also kind of a silly line. And on queen b5, queen c3, queen c4 is probably an improvement for Serana. Um, oh, yeah. If he plays queen c3 here, he can continue well. with queen c4. That makes like sense. Like many of my lines, it looks pretty irrelevant. Um, someone is asking if Raymond is beating Azuria. We'll, we'll take a look at that game as well. Good question. Raymond sawing board four for the Kangaroos. Had a super good performance last week. Okay, well, I just quickly am looking at that game. I mean, Azuria is the one who has an attack here. Raymond is up a pawn, but I, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like he's winning here. Well, isn't Raymond up like a oh, piece? Oh. Like piece for two pawns. It's been one of those one of those sacks. If we go to move nineteen, it's one of these okay. take on G five sacks. Got it. Um Bishop E four from Zviad. That's two games in a row that Zviad has sacrificed. He's uh he's feeling aggressive today. Okay, now I see what happened here. Ah, and it's a very nice complicated sequence before he takes back on G five. Okay. Maybe this was better um, than I first thought looking at the game. He is up a piece and he's up on time. Okay. That said, yeah, he's up a piece. He's up eight minutes on time. So it feels like Zviad's not finding like what he what he wanted, right? Right. Let's look he at like... this from Raymond's perspective as well. Sure. Um, uh, that bishop is a is a pretty serious defender of the king. Um, okay, I thought you were going to say the bishop on e4 is scary, but yes, the bishop on g7 is very helpful as well. Pretty good job at the moment. Um, so, as black here, let's see. He needs to find a way to get the stress off of his king. How can he continue here? Do you like... No, I don't even know if I like rook e6, trying to... I would like rook e6 if it were my move, just allowing the other rook to come to e8, right. covering some squares. Right. But it looks like the onus is on Azoria here to come up with something. I mean, his time has ticked down another minute mm -hmm. as we watch. And, uh, you know, if he goes queen f5, then rook a to d8 is an option as well. Right. Okay, so... Because queen h7 doesn't do much. So he did play queen f5. Yeah. So queen f5 looks like it's scary because he's eyeing h7, but after queen h7, yeah. the king can go to f8, and there's no queen h8 yeah. because of the bishop. Like you said, that bishop is an amazing defending piece here. Maybe not that impressive, but maybe the idea is to then play rook g5. So mm -hmm. he seems to threaten rook d7, and then if you play rook a d8, and this is kind of the key to attacking often. If mm -hmm. if it's not an easy attack, if there's you know a competition between the defender and the attacker. Yep. Often what you need to do is sort of like aim at one thing and then have a second idea at the same time. So rook d8, queen h7, king f8, rook g5 might be might be an idea here. That looks kind of scary for black. How he'd have to defend the bishop on g7. Um, right. So he has to push the pawn. I think everything else is losing. Something like f6, huh? Yep. The, he, I don't know. I think here Azuria would actually have a pretty scary attack. Mm -hmm. He can bring in his bishop as well. Maybe bishop d5. I wonder if black can sack on e4 here. Maybe that's the problem with white's whole attack. In the current position, just take on e4 position. right away? Maybe. Interesting. So rook takes. It's a lot to calculate. 
Um, okay. He so, just did it, by the way. Okay, so let's go back to the game. <laughs> yeah, he played it. So um, the point is, white plays a move like rook e4, and then black plays a move like knight e7. But then you have to calculate rook d7. And so... Yeah. Right. I mean, it seems like knight f5, rook c7, bishop e4, and black wins, but... That's true, and he could have played knight e7 even before taking on e4, but it's nice to get rid of the queen h7 attack. But on knight e7, then white has queen h7 check, and right. then rook moves again to like g5 or something. Yeah. So this way, he takes out the queen check as an intermediate move, and then knight e7 just sort of hits everything. Yep. Um, so I'm expecting that's what we're going to see here. Um, yeah. We have... I mean... Maybe possible to move to knight anywhere, like knight a5 maybe, but knight e7 is the most. <laughs> knight a5, just no, just saying, no like, respect. Hey, both on these light squares. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me just quickly check. So in oh, this matchup... Knight e7, rook d7 probably also loses to queen c1. So. Just playing knight e7 and threatening queen c1, right. Yeah. So the San Jose hackers, mm -hmm. they were leading three to one in this game but it looks like raymond is going to help the kangaroos get slightly back into it yeah i mean if the board four wins a game with black against board two that's huge that, right. that might be enough to basically equalize the match even right. if we haven't seen exactly what's happening on the other boards yet but so let's oh let's look at the hikaru and daniel cool. naradiski game since sure since that game i saw from the opening it was going to be exciting too right Okay, so I'm just coming into it. Uh, I know we yeah. have a lot of Hikaru fans. We also have a lot of Dania fans. They've played hundreds of matches online. Yeah. So they, they must be pretty familiar with each other's playing style by now. Yeah, they've done this before. Yeah. Um, I wonder if... I mean, I just have to wonder if Dania can take on B2. I noticed four-minute time advantage for Hikaru. Pretty standard kind of... Not an outrageous Hikaru right. so far. Right. So what do we think? If knight, mm -hmm. if knight b2, bishop g7, king g7, knight. then rook takes c7, white, black might be able to just take on d1. Sorry, say that line um, again? If knight... If if knight b2, I think that's the critical move, but okay, okay. he doesn't play it. So I guess irrelevant now. <laughs> okay, so he played bishop f8. He decided not to trade. I wonder what he might be looking at. Is maybe bishop c5 the threat yeah. here? Since maybe he's trying to go bishop c5, bishop e3. Maybe Danya's like really liking his position. Right, because um, um, he's pushing Hikaru's king towards the corner. It's going to be much less yeah. active in the end game. Maybe pushing his rook as well. So Hikaru meets it with rook with bishop b3. So even if he if uh, Danya does get his bishop on e3, at least Hikaru can now play rook e1. Okay, apparently Hikaru said this is very hard to win. Okay. <laughs> Two of the best yeah. puzzle rush rushers to ever push the old wood. What a matchup. That's pretty funny, Tashmik. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually had the thought that, like, a, an event in the All-Star, like, thing this year could be, like, puzzle rush. So you, like, take some of the All-Stars from the different teams, right? Mm -hmm. And they would, like, puzzle rush, and it's just, like, one versus one. So if you score more than the other person, they're both doing it at the same time. We've got two boards, right? Oh, that'd be hilarious. So the same puzzles for both? Mm -hmm. And then you see who gets to, like, you know, 45 and who gets to 44. That would be such a stressful stressful match, but I love it. I think we need to have a puzzle <laughs> rush competition, head-to-head, -head, same yeah. tactics, pressure's on. Yeah. Uh, so apparently Azoria is desperate. It seems like Raymond is just yeah, winning that game. That's what we thought too. Last we saw it, I... I'll just take a quick peek back there. Okay. Um. Oh. He resigned. He resigned. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Ninety-seven took everything. Yeah. Let's see what happened here. I sacked another rook as well. You're, yeah. He did play ninety-seven like we expected. He had to sack. Queen takes. Yeah. Took another. Oh gosh, this looks terrible. I'm going Toast. out of there. Toast. Um, oh, and Wang Hao and Gabriel Sargisian just drew. Sargisian, sorry. That's another important matchup. Yeah. But, um, okay, so Gabriel Sargisian, the board two versus the board one, but with the advantage of the white pieces, kind of like. Yeah. Oh, I guess it. I guess Hikaru also has white this round, so that means that next round Wang Hao and Danya have white. Right. Them. And so the Seattle Sluggers aren't doing as well as i expected i already said that but 5-4 for the mechanics is a great start so far 
and yeah. now they're having their matchup of the match, so to say. Yeah. That said, Danya's been thinking about this position forever. I mean, what? I mean, if Hikaru said it's hard to win, then, then that should mean that it's hard to win. If that's what he said, that's that's the comment you relayed. Then why is Danya thinking so long? What's he looking for? Well, he's looking at something really deep. <laughs> He definitely is, um, really but, but Dan cool. tends to get in, in time pressure, right, from what we've seen yes. so far. So maybe he's comfortable sitting and thinking at the critical positions, not too worried about his bullet. Yeah. All right, so he plays rook b8. So he's basically saying, take on c4, take on c4, bishop e5, win a pawn on c7. He wants this for some reason. Uh, he wants this? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure what the justification is for this for for Danya, I mean, I looked at this as well, and I'm not sure what he's going to do after Hikaru trades and plays bishop e5. Yeah, it looks like, looks like he has to play like rook b4 here to protect the bishop and at least attack a4. Because um, this is the only way he doesn't lose a pawn. I think he still loses a pawn. I don't know. Oh, because of b3? Just... No, b3 also hangs. Wait, so after bishop c4, bishop c4, bishop e5. Uh, bishop e5? Rook. Yeah, after bishop yeah. e5, I was thinking rook b4 here. Rook b4. Yeah, because we're attacking on a4 and also protecting yeah. the bishop. Um. Okay. And then white probably just plays a move like a5, and then, I don't know, right. bishop d6 or something. Thing. At least he has time yeah, to tricky. defend it if he's able to play bishop d6. According to chat, Hikaru also said this is hard to play for black. So it's both hard for him to win and hard to play for black. <laughs> it's kind of like a... Right. Hmm, that's a head scratcher. <laughs> Tagbon, that's funny. I, I love the puzzle rush emotes that are being used in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so good to know it's difficult for both of them. Hikaru does have the time advantage, though. Which is definitely going to be helping him on in the later game. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. Anton Smirnov versus Soggy Cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anton Smirnov is up the exchange here. For a second, I thought Soggy Cheese was, so never mind. Yeah, but it doesn't look like he's got a way to progress without sacking the exchange back on F4 at some point. Right. Um, let's see. Other than that, the bishop can just sit on e5, and it's not like white's rooks can go anywhere. Right. Yeah, so if he sacks the rooks on f4, then the f6 pawn is looking kind of weak, and after king g3, h4, he might have mm -hmm. the better rook and pawn endgame. Yeah. I think he would. It looks like he might. Yeah. Maybe. So probably that's the plan. Yeah. Probably that's what's coming, but it's not completely, it's not completely clear or simple. Right, right. Okay, he just took. Yeah, so he four. just goes for it. That's that's what he's got to do. He's also got a plan of playing like rook f five and switching his rook to the queen side. So he's got a few, few arrows in his quiver here. Right. So if you're saying black doesn't want to trade off rooks here, he just plays maybe bishop e five or something. Oh yeah, but then he'll he'll surely lose as well. Yeah, which is what he yeah, did. Yeah, that's okay. that's not the right choice. I mean, white just goes rook f five, rook h five advances the advances the pawns on the king side yeah okay no that's that's not okay <laughs> <laughs> you can't not just okay. not trade a rook for your bishop i mean it's not like you're gonna have a better opportunity are you <laughs> he won't he's just obviously trying no. to desperately keep the position closed here whatever right. it takes 20 seconds yeah um all right okay. so i'm well, going back over. to the hikaru and dania game let's let's see what they did here okay this was not the line we were looking at kind rook of b8 First trade and then knight to e4, bishop e7, straight into opposite colored bishops. Okay. Ah, but he has the mating net on Danya's king, so that's right. what he's counting on. Yeah, the mating net being that white's bishop is keeping black square where he could escape, and if he ever got a rook on the back rank, then he would be able to mate it on h8. So, so I wonder if what's coming is something like rook to b4 b3 bishop b3 rook c7 and then rook back to b8 right 
So that's exactly what just happened here. He played rook d1 right away, so he was going for that mating oh. net threat that you okay. were just saying. Danya, and Danya came right back. So now he's going for rook to d7. Yeah, d7 looks like the natural move here. And then I guess Danya's just going to play c6 and try and hold on to his pawns a little bit longer. Right. So all, <laughs> all Hikaru wants to do here is attack those weak pawns from the back, and he's not afraid of losing his pawns ever because the rook is just tied to the 8th rank here. Ooh, grim defense. <laughs> rook to c8. Oh. Grim defense. Okay, and Hikaru's maybe thinking of playing b5, a takes b5, a5. Right. Oh. So Danya stops that by attacking a4 right away. Gets his bishop around. Now he can cover all queenside pawns with the bishop on b5. Yep. And it looks like he's holding it at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Slowly, but somehow working. I think we should take a quick look at the game between uh, else, Kirilla yeah. and Sarana just because uh, Christian is under 20 seconds here and he's defending yeah. a pawn down. Yeah. This game I've been watching out of the corner of my eyes. It's been pretty It's been pretty epic. Um, well, can Sarana push this to a win? Um, in a classical time control, I, I'm not sure if this would be a win or a draw for white, actually. I'm not sure either. I know I've lost a similar <laughs> endgame as black. Right. But that doesn't mean that much. Um, it, was a, it was actually... A position that was drawn if i played correctly so i guess that means something <laughs> got it that's fair i mean so so all black has to do is make not sure flag. Th not flag and, and not let the white king get to like f6 or h6 right right that would be terrible but his bishop is doing exactly that he's stopping the white king from being able to march forward to f5 or to f6 here so he's positioned yeah. really well okay knight f7 I was surprised that Serrano moved the knight off of d4 and let the black king get in contact with the e-pawn. I think this is a good defensive option for Christian to have his king mm -hmm. attacking the e-pawn at all times really removes a lot of white's options for maneuvering. Right. And uh, hi, Armenia Eagles in the chat. It's nice to see Pro Chess League teams also watching the commentary. Thanks for playing, oh, you guys. Man. The Armenia Eagles, they barely won their match yesterday. So they're they're at the top. Yep, eight they're and a half to seven and a half. But I think last year was also close with Delhi Dynamite, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so this looks like it's a draw. They've been repeating the position. Um, Black's bishop defending his h7 pawn. His king making sure that the e pawn can't move forward anymore. He's yeah playing the defense properly here. Yeah, it looks like looks like Christian's doing a very good yeah. job of this one. The Minnesota Blizzards are 5-7, to seven, so they are one point away from at least having a guaranteed draw. Okay. Um, doing, doing well. Daniel has one, set, one minute on the clock. Hikaru has about eight minutes here, but it's it still looks very similar to what you were saying. Um, yeah. he, Daniel is now protecting. His bishop's pointing towards e8. He could play rook on e8, so there's no more mating net there. Yeah, this should be a draw. Well, maybe I'm saying that too early because mm -hmm. Hikaru is tricky. But let's go to a game between the Minnesota Blizzard and San Diego Surfers if they've started already. Sure. Um, they have started. Um, the first game I'm looking at is just sort of in the opening phase. Nothing too exciting mm -hmm. yet. Um, Jeffrey Xiong has an interesting game against Bai Jin Shi. Okay, I just opened up that game. I guess we'll go to the Minnesota Blizzards once they've started a little bit more, even though they're so close. Once they get a little further in, yeah. Yep. Good to see NM Buddha in the chat as well. I like seeing people who... Well, one, obviously, he's a good friend. I know him in real life, but people who watch the stream. So thanks for watching, you guys. David, thanks for doing commentary. Mod team. <laughs> Crazy copy man. Thanks so much. Okay, I'm done with the shoutouts, right. I promise. All right, so Jeffrey's going to come into F6 here. The weak dark squares mm -hmm. are a problem for Bai Jin Shi. The position has to be an advantage for white, obviously, yep. between the small lead in development and the weakness on F6. Mm -hmm. Bai Jin Shi's but... knight on F5 is placed well for the defense because he doesn't want to yeah. let the white queen get on H6. But it does make me wonder if g4 is ever going to be a threat here. 
well, basically, it's going to be hard to win the game without playing G4 at some point. That's right. going to have to be like a piece of the winning plan, it seems. So, yeah. So cool. Hmm, moving the queen again. What's she looking at? She's looking at like G4, queen H4. Um, yeah, I guess he just wants to transfer the queen to that side of the board. So, yeah. maybe knight F6 to prevent it. Yep. Knight F6 just completely cutting off the black's queen's plan here. Um, I mean, knight f6 is the most natural move here, so I wonder if there's anything else, like maybe rook a d1 first, but then mm -hmm. the queen just goes to e7, so I guess he hasn't accomplished that much with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like white couldn't play the more simplified position with a queen trade. I mean, right. rook d1, queen h4, trade queens, knight to d6. Mm -hmm. Obviously, white's position is, is nice. What about just g4 right away? Then black plays queen h4 i think queen h4 anyway got it yeah. so queen d8 is actually stopping the g4 threat mm -hmm. that makes sense so maybe knight f6 then <laughs> definitely would take jeffrey here um and dallas destiny has a very close match with the chengdu pandas so yeah do you have any? Did you have any thoughts or predictions about which teams were going to win today, Alexandra? I normally do, do, but this time I didn't make any predictions. So okay. I'm excited about yours to see how close the San Diego Surfers and Minnesota Blizzards game is going to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Finally, I want to see a G4 here. I've been looking at this move for too long now, and now your Queen H4 idea doesn't work anymore. And he played it. Right. Thank you, Jeffrey, for giving me what I needed to see. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now maybe a move like queen g5 makes a couple. Oh. Well, it makes one threat, but it makes it twice. It makes the threat of knight h5 winning the queen or the knight. Right, right. But then maybe knight to g8 is a <laughs> defense both Does pieces. knight g8 actually work here? This is crazy. I think knight g8 works. It might. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure, you could still play knight h5, but you don't want to trade queens here. Right. Hmm. And... It's actually threatening to take the knight, because if the pawn takes back, so let's say I make a random move like h4, knight takes f6, e takes f6, queen takes, queen takes, king takes, yes, his king is on f6, but there's no more attack anymore, and he, he just won a pawn here, so that's an actual threat. Yeah. Okay, so Jeffrey also said, look, knight g8 is coming. Yeah. So I'm going to play rook to h3, and then if knight f6, pawn takes f6, queen takes f6... They'll have rook h7 ready. Right. Or, or queen h6 is also made. Yeah, so, so he has whatever. to play rook h3 have here. Something. He has to play rook h3. Yeah. I think um, I think Jeffrey, I mean, the la I, the only game I saw of his from last week was queen d4 check. Mm -hmm. The queen stack with the checkmate with the two rooks. So right. he's feeling like similar territory. Like he's about to lay out some new checkmate patterns. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see these play. Um, so... Uh, how is he going to defend here? So obviously, like you said, rook takes h7, h7 is a threat. Yeah. He has to move the pawn, probably h6. Has to move the pawn. And h5. That makes h5? sense. h5. Okay. Because if g8, he's got bishop h3. Right. If he played h6, then white can trade on f6. Rook there takes we go. h. This is the mating pattern it's we're Jeffrey looking time. for. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeffrey time. There That's a good saying. Um, okay, so G takes H5 is yeah. just him is mated. getting mated. Just mated by Queen G5, right. King H8, Queen H5. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm just yeah, going to play H7. it out really fast. So this is checkmate. Mm -hmm. You cannot take on H5. Let's Show everybody rewind. the mate. I did a little quickly, though. Um, but if he can't take, and that's just a free pawn, and we're looking at Rook H7 also threatening mate, then... Mm -hmm sure he can make some space for his king maybe he could play rook e8 rook d8 but he just resigned okay yeah. what happened after rook d8 you check him king f8 um lots lots of moves you could do here yeah. you could rook, rook h8, h8 just straightforward yeah. attack the knight yeah yeah pretty painful yeah. nicely done though jeffrey mm -hmm. sweet all right, we clicked on the right game there. We sure did. Straight, straight into the anthologies. Can you click on Daniel's game before he flags? Oh, He's got oh. two or three seconds on the clock. Oh, my gosh. 
Don't flag, Dania. How how do you feel, uh, team manager, bullet, looking at right? these games? It looks like he's going to lose, though. It looks like he's going to lose, though. Rook B8 is coming. Yeah. And he resigned. Wow. Yeah. How did Hikaru wow. pull off this game? I, I'm sure it was a... How did he work that one? It was a lot the of time move, pressure, too. The key move was this move on move 73, I think, is really a cool move. Okay. Let's look at it G6. here. G6. And it's a similar move to something we've already seen this week, mm -hmm. so... Right? Yeah. Daniel's trying to clean up the pawn on A6, the last pawn on the on the board that's really threatening him, it seems like, mm -hmm. and then you know he can hunker down. But after G6, there's the threat of G7. Right. So he takes that pawn and now... He can't take now... on A6 because of G7. Can't play Rook A8 because right. of Rook A8. Now J. Hikaru gets the A pawn, and probably this is where... Daniel missed the draw on move 75. Mm -hmm. uh, can anybody guess how Black should defend this game? That's a good question. I think there's just one clear move, and then it's pretty simple. So he can't play. He played F takes G6. Are you saying it's after F takes G6 or it's before? It's after F takes G6. Okay. Yeah. Rook H7, check King E7, A7. So mm -hmm. G6 allowed Hikaru to defend this pawn in the seventh rank, and that's what he's going to use to win. Right. But how could Daniel defend it here? How could Daniel defend this? Let's see, chat. We're going to wait and see what you guys are saying. See if anybody in chat can find, can find a quick little move here. They're saying rook g8. That's got to be wrong. Tangrams is the first one to get it right. Unless I'm wrong, but c5, c5, c5. Yeah, you just need to cover a8 with your bishop, and then there's no way you can ever lose to the pawn on a7. Nice. Everybody got it after you said it out loud. <laughs> All right, good job. <laughs> okay. Oh, the count. Uh, sorry. Ooh, what's just... this? Is a crazy we were looking position. at this game before, and we were saying how it was tied. He won. He so yeah. so. Kirilla flagged. Was he losing on here? Time. No, he was still drawing. He was playing perfectly. Right. It's it's really hard. The reason that I lost this endgame once before, I forgot to mention, is because I ran out of time. Because white can play for like 50 moves. There's there's no, yeah, you shouldn't really lose. But but it's it's very hard to defend that quickly and to play yeah. accurately. Yeah. But check uh, out this game. And, and he, apparently Mueller he missed and... the draw for by one move because it was about to be 50 moves. Mm -hmm. All right, Cameron look this, Wheeler. Look at this game between Cameron Wheeler and XY, XXY Soul. Okay. Xu Xiang Yu. Xu Xiang Yu. Yeah. Rook F5 is played. This crazy move in this position where his queen's hanging. And right. Who knows what's going on here? I. Not how did we even? How long has the queen been under attack? Okay, so he played rook d6. He replied yeah. with rook f6. Obviously, because well, if rook takes, we have rook d8, and that's checkmating because he cannot mm -hmm. block. We're gonna take back. So. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, he plays rook takes knight. Yeah. And now. White can't play rook e8 mate because of the queen on a4. Maybe that's what maybe that's what White missed when he went for this. Uh, sorry, what, and now he's, what, what did you say he missed? White may have planned rook to e8 checkmate in this position, and then after rook f5 realized the queen on a4. Is protecting it? Oh, man. Protecting it. Yeah, how is he... Can he play queen? No, he can't play queen d8 anymore. None of those tactics work because now the king can move to g7. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now he can take on f5 and then take back on f6. At least he'll have the two rooks on the board. Mm -hmm. um, because if he takes back with a pawn on f6, then he's still constructing black's king. He can't play g7, and those mm -hmm. back rank mates are a thing once again. Right. Looks like bishop f5 and king h7 would pro possibly be enough for black to, right. to come out and win this game. But it's true. It's queen's off on a weird spot, and white does have two rooks to attack with. Yep. I mean, this is not looking good for white. I'm just trying to find the best alternative yeah. here. Okay, so he yep. just took on f5. Okay. Wow. What a great this game for Vice close, Roger. Right? This match is two and a half, two and a half. Yes, very, very close. So if Cameron gets an upset here, that would that would put the uh, pandas in danger. Yep. Yeah. Cameron gets enough. I mean, it's still pretty early, but that would be a very nice upset on the part of da Dallas Destiny, because Cameron Wheeler is 
uh, Dallas's fourth board. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anytime you're board four is scoring, yeah. it's big news. Nice. I was kind of expecting that to rhyme, but that's <laughs> that also works. <laughs> okay. Um, let's, Anytime let's... you're board four is scoring, I'm going to say something boring. Oh, well, it rhymed. It's not true, but at least it rhymed. Yeah, I gave you what you wanted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Are there any other interesting positions we should look at? Uh, what about the game between Anthony He and international master uh, Strema Vicious? So between okay. Hanky and Coman Doris one two three, we've been talking a little bit about their fourth board. So it's it'd be nice to see how he's doing since he lost his first game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's see. Bishop c six blockading, mm -hmm. threatening. He's got two connected pass pawns. This looks like a pretty cool position. Right. Um, e four bishop takes d five is not an option for white here because his rook is hanging on e1 so good point otherwise it would have been really nice to get those two pawns on the center there so the other move that would come to mind would be knight c7 knight c7. what about knight f6 is that not a four knight f6 similar to knight c7 yeah oh right knight c7 is also a four so yeah so it looks like he's got two options one of them's gonna happen he's gonna trade this knight for a rook yep so anthony um Anthony sacking. He is. I I normally wouldn't like this kind of sack, but with those two pass pawns, b4, mm -hmm. b3, b2, all protected so far because of his bishop, it's it's an interesting attempt. Yeah. Uh, what side would you take here? Equal time. Um. Oh gosh, if I just had to like sit down quickly at one side of the board without calculating anything, yes. I guess I would sit down on white side right. if I didn't get to calculate. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's. Calculate a little bit more. It was like some kind of like musical chairs <gasps> and the music <laughs> stops and you die for like a chair. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just put a, you know, that would be There's a some great possibility. way to stress out chess students. <laughs> There's some possibility that after rook b1, b4, somehow the bishop could be trapped on a3 for a while. Not like it's going to be lost, but like I think Cameron can't Wheeler him. just lost. No, he no, won. No, you're kidding me. Uh, you're right. He lost. He just lost? That was he lost. What? You're right. What? With the extra queen. Sorry, we need to hop hop in there. So yeah, he got mated. So what happened was on rook to d5. Uh yeah. Queen c2. Okay. Rook f5. Oh, and then he if he takes back, there's rook e8, bishop e4. So he just on rook d5, he just blundered he... his bishop. The bishop needed to move. Yeah, he didn't he didn't see this this threat. I'm assuming. Oof. Wow. Well, that was a um complex complex game oh my god i think white i think white missed a mate in f a couple moves on move 36 move with 36? a rookie check maybe rook g5 uh sorry so instead of rookie eight yeah rook g5 check mm -hmm. pawn takes rook rook e8 king h7 bishop e4 right King h6, rook h8, Somebody's right? been doing their puzzle rush. I'm looking at you, David. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. Um, wow. Well, this was really nice play on Xu Shang Yu's side as well. We do have to give him some credit for the nice attacking. Yeah, for the up. resources. I mean, yeah. what a crazy game. And then you like you like lose your queen in some massive crazy tactics and then keep going. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, that's what the pandas needed. There you go. So now they're they're the keeping their lead. Let's go back to the game between uh, Anthony He and uh, Strema Vicious, since we all right got out of there early okay. to see that beautiful finale. Right back to it. The pawns on B four. All right, I'm gonna give you one more try. Which side would you like to play here? <laughs> Just kidding. I, I I haven't figured much new out, so I guess I'd still. Say what did I even say the first time? White. You said I, white. I said white. Okay, I guess I'm just much more intimidated by these two pawns on a4 and b4. Yeah, I might have wanted to play bishop c4 or something last move. Yeah, <laughs> but now that the situation has changed because white is under 20 seconds, and when I asked you, you had equal oh, time. Oh, I didn't even know the time. I didn't even look at the clock. And I just looked at the chair. That's how you trick them, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You give no time. <laughs> yeah uh okay okay so now what bishop to b3 okay i like bishop to b3 because it's protecting but then it's also stopping me from promoting the pawn any longer 
but the thing is if you play b3 rook takes a3 yeah and if you play bishop b2 rook takes a4 so the only yeah. way to get forward is to trap more bishops in front of your pawns i'm not sure how it eventually moves forward but i know it's what has to happen i kind of i was looking at bishop b2 it's probably doesn't work rook takes a4 and then bishop c3 to try to keep pushing the pawn um mm -hmm. but i guess rook b1 and white has enough pieces to stop the attack maybe but it's still it's still tricky yeah okay so let me let me go back tricky there it is oh rook c5 letting white trade one of those pawns Ooh, i don't know if, if i agree with this that being said well, as, as the person who said i would take white i'm happy to see that <laughs> yeah fair enough but with 10 seconds on the board it's, it's yeah i don't be have hard. enough time to really enjoy it from yeah. for too long right right what, okay so what what comes next bishop b2 what comes next? bishop oh, yes, c3 please let my rook off of a1 please let my rook off of a1 i'm not crazy about this decision from i mean i'm obviously gonna pick black here to be contrarian because he picked white yeah um this is i mean the bishops are super annoying to play against white's like hoping their rook's not trapped <laughs> <laughs> right uh so maybe he needs to play rook b5 bishop e1 or bishop e1 okay this is grim. What does he even do if rook b2, rook c1, bishop b3, bishop g3 mate? Uh oh. Four seconds. Somebody's saying, why so scared of two pass pawns? Some I hope you're being move. sarcastic. Now, rook c2, <gasps> and Anthony wins. And he wins. This is not what I thought was going to happen, but yeah. But he did blunder. He did blunder. Okay. Yeah. Oof. That was, that was intense. So that's potentially, not to say it too soon, but potentially a huge point for a fourth board. Yep. Yep. Anthony cleaning it up with the extra bishop. And the other result that finished was a draw between international master Luke Harmon Velody and uh, grandmaster Zhao Jun. So that's a pretty good result since I think he's their, is he their third board for Dallas Destiny? They're, they're just so close in rating that, yeah, he's their third third board okay he's our ja third he's our third board okay um against Zhao jun who is the second who is the first who's the board first who's the board first, board. first board yeah today. yeah they don't have a ding okay okay so minnesota and san diego are in the fourth round so let's just keep our eyes on that i think minnesota has a two point lead uh yep minnesota has seven points why don't we look at the game between um grandmaster mauricio flores and international master john bryant just because it seems like bryant is trying okay. to go for an attack there all even right even though he has three minutes and it's just been 22 moves that's okay well the surfers need a couple checkmates here if they're down by two yep. So They're what would your strategy game. be going into a game like this? So you're the San Diego Surfers. You know you have to yeah. have a really good result. Is everybody playing for a win during this game? Because that's also more risky. Usually. I mean, it depends. Yeah. If there's some board where you're, like, really outrated yeah. or something, then, you know, or a player who's been doing really badly yep. so far today, and you're like, well, maybe if they just stabilize and get a draw, the rest of the players could try and win. Right. There may be some variation. In this case, I would say the goal is you want three points to tie the match. You don't yep. think about three and a half and winning the match. You say, we need three points to tie the match. So you want at least three of your players playing for wins. And maybe one guy could play for a draw if they were off form. Right. And they are very similar in rating, most of yeah. them. So there's nobody who's been playing super badly or out outrated. So that makes sense here. Right. In this matchup, basically... There's a you know, a small advantage for Minnesota on board two and a rating wise, and a small advantage for San Diego on board one. Right. Um. So, I mean, you would definitely expect your two players with white to try and yeah to try and do well. And, which and that's is, exactly uh, what, um, Brian is trying to do here. So he he played knight yeah. h three. Potentially mm -hmm. he's thinking about queen h six, although I don't see yeah. the follow up to it. The follow-up would be to then play knight f4. Got it. Knight f4. Not knight g5. Knight f4 eyeing the h5 pawn. Yeah. Which is actually Probably. already threatened right after queen h6. Yeah. Depending what's happening, bishop g5 could be another option, trying to get the g5 square for the knight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I suppose once the queen gets to h6, there's a few different options. Right. So, so do, you, do we like Let's queen h6 here as white? Should we take a look at that? It's it's the key move. If we don't go for like queen h6, then what are we doing here? 
Then black's, right. you know, going to attack the d4 pawn yeah. and have the bishop pair. Okay, uh, so uh, queen h6, threatening queen takes h5 right off the bat. Uh, how yeah. is white black going to respond to this? He could grab d4 right away, although mm -hmm. that doesn't seem to take into consideration white's move at all since he continues with knight f4. Yeah, um, and then it would probably be to just sack the rook on f4. Right. So do you like rook takes d4, or is there another move you think black has? Um, yeah, rook takes d4 would probably be pretty logical. It was the only move that I had, that my instinct had like told me to look at. Yeah, okay. But uh, Bryant has just played bishop e3, covering the d-pawn first. Interesting. That makes yeah. sense. I guess he wants to play a little more solidly here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he thought that rook d4 was annoying, then certainly makes sense to stop that first. Right. Still looks pretty hard to stop queen h6 yep i mean black could consider rook f8 here rook f8 to bring the bishop back he on f8 consider it. i mean then he's planning to play queen h6 bishop f8 queen h5 bishop to g7 mm -hmm. queen to h4 and now white's up a pawn and they still have ideas of like bishop h6 or knight g5 or bishop g5 to f6 and he just played rook f8 actually he did play he it did. he did play it uh, but there's a little bar next to the board that that just shot up for white when black played uh, rook to e8. So I guess, I don't know, either oh. it was a bad idea or that bar is not looking very deep. Okay, so is white just, let's see. Yeah, okay, the the computer this must like exactly this for white what, then. This is exactly what you said, exactly yeah. Exactly what we were thinking might happen. Um, um, but he does have a minute and 27 seconds, and... Yeah. That that isn't a lot of time to figure out. That's an attack not here. a lot of time. If this do not obviously don't trade yeah. the queens off the board here. Rook g four, nice blocking it right yeah. away. Does knight g five just right away go for a bit? Knight g five looks pretty good because yeah. now black's even set up rook f four for you, taking on f seven mm -hmm. uh, with tempo. So I don't the bringing the queen to the king side is always like an instinct when you're getting attacked. Yeah, but here it doesn't look like it improves black's right. But situation. But the other thing to consider is. Queen h7, obviously. It looks nice, mm -hmm. and you're thinking rook f4 yeah. after. Actually, mm -hmm. queen h7 and then rook f4. Yeah, uh, that's I guess, what I'm thinking about. I guess that's just terrifying. It looks so crushing that I'm looking at f6 for black here. Oh, no, that's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. When you have to push the pawns that are protecting yeah. your king so desperately, things are not looking good. And actually, f6 doesn't help at all. After pawn takes, if the bishop takes, then queen h7 to f7 is mate. Yep. And if the queen takes, then queen h7, king f8, rook f4 is only even better for white because there's no f pawn. Uh, yeah, so if queen takes, you said rook f4 first or queen h7? I think both work, actually. Yeah, yeah I queen both h7, work. king over, queen rook, rook f4, f4 just terrifying. Yeah. Okay. So this looks good for the San Diego surfers. It looks like it's going to be 6-7. Yeah. My Oh, Penguin just won his game. Uh-oh. Okay. okay, so Penguin just won his game. So that's getting... They're at so least equalized. They've at least equalized. Very exciting. Um, San Diego surfers, let's, let's see how you guys are doing on your other boards. What about Fidel Corrales and Alexei Dreyev? I mean, Ooh. Joshua Shang like, had his queen trapped in the opening. That's how Andrew eventually won that game. But okay. Uh, well, um, yeah, you want to see the top board battle. Yeah, huh? but... Drea versus Fidel Corrales. Equal material. Intense endgame. Intense endgame. So white's got to deal with that B-pawn mm -hmm. or lose. Mm -hmm. um, so knight to a5 right because you want to block the pawn as, as fast as possible here yeah the, the white king's nowhere near close enough right. i would rather play king f1 right. but i think that white is on the defensive here sure i guess mm -hmm. he, he has to fight for for a win because even if they draw they lose the match mm -hmm. maybe his only plan is being able to gobble up that b4 pawn but his king is so far away Let's see. Yeah. So, yeah, he's got to get there. Minnesota's got eight points. The surfers need every right. last game to go in their favor right. now. And there's only two games left. So there's this one and the yeah. one we were just looking at where yeah. it looked like... Brian's game. Yeah, Brian's game where he, he looked like he was winning. So, yeah. uh, good night, Jedi Knight. 
just saw somebody saying that in the chat. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, it looks like Bryant's still playing it very well. So it's going to come down to like a half point game. I mean, if Bryant wins, right, then. Right, which I'll just take a quick look back there. Um, let's catch up with some of the moves that were made. Queen, mm -hmm. he played knight h7. All right, which makes sense because black moved the queen to c2 to f avoid any rook f4 maneuvers. So uh, John Bryant continued with knight h7, rook d5, okay. so knight f6. Just, he's just planning to mate that king. He's saying yep. you're never getting out of the dark squares. I'm going to play bishop g5. Yeah. The king is trapped there. This is nice. This should be in a book on taking advantage of weak dark squares here. Uh -huh. He just yeah. used every single maneuver. So many different pieces yeah. taking advantage here. He's played it very calmly, too. He didn't yeah. allow any counterplay. Right. He defended his D-pawn. Look how well defended his D-pawn is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he just got rid of any counterplay once again. Very yeah. clean, very precise. The H3 move. You guys like that, everybody? H3 just... Not going to get back rank mated. Going to get back to my inevitable checkmate. Exactly. Those are the best kinds of checkmates. When you could take your time, flawlessly just cut down any counterattack, and your plan is still there because your opponent is so helpless. It's like, -ha 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 -ha, you know? Yeah. Just feeling a little evil watching it. That's okay. So all on e -Gruck. Um He's just played a, a tactic, F4. Whoa. Uh-oh. Look at this little exchange of blows. This looks more like what would happen in an opening. These sort of pawns all attacking each other. Right. I mean, Mr. Dre. Like yes. Yes. He's going to tie the game. It, it's too it soon to say. So. It's too soon to say. It seems so. I mean, he's got knight c4 check, trading knights. Right. Um. So Corrales doesn't even take the pawn on d6. That means knight c4 is probably a good move anyway here. Right. Or this, he's got bishop c6 check if the king takes it. Right, he can't even take it. Um, can he just play knight b7 here? Well, then the king could take it. Right, because he, he can't play bishop c6. c6 anymore. Okay. It might be best to play bishop c6 attacking the knight and then knight b7 next move. Or just gobble up but, a pawn the way he did. Yeah. Um, this is still not, Many ways not to skin this cat that now. easy yet, though. Oof. Well, Blizzards choking the last round? No, they're not. They're good. playing their best. Come on, guys, give them some credit here. Yeah, but it, I mean, the, wow, the surfers are going to be happy. Yeah, eight eight from coming down with two yeah. losses in this round. Yeah, quite quite an incredible comeback. So yeah, from seven five. So down, it's what, hard to do. Right. So Alexi here is trying to grab that H pawn, um, mm -hmm. because if he does and he has a passed pawn on the H file, then he's definitely going to keep the black king and or knight distracted enough. Yeah. And he's just keeping the black king away from his D pawn by controlling D5, so the D pawn can't get attacked too much. Yep. He even pushed D5 because it was attacked yeah. by the knight. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Back. Bishop h5 is going to force him far away from the I like pawn. it. Look at all of these squares yeah. that are controlled by white. His king is just in so much pain right now. That's that dirty Russian endgame. <laughs> exactly. Bishop, the clean, knight on f5, clean. bishop on h5. Yeah. You know this is a guy who can mate with bishop and knight with 10 seconds blindfolded. When you see exactly. That. Exactly. Um, all right. So black Fidel Corrales yeah, no, desperately no, trying no, to hold. Take that h4 pawn, huh? Nope. He's just going straight to to uh, get rid of the knight by bringing his king closer to the deep on, helping promote, just really enjoying the end game here, I'm sure. Oh, and as I say it, he takes it. He takes it. <laughs> now he takes it, okay. Now he takes oh, it. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna see our first wow. tie in this division. Very nice. Oh, all right. All right. So do people want to see the last three moves, or can we call this match? Okay, he won. Okay. We can call Corrales it. We can call it. Amazing. And uh, um, is that is that it? Is that 8-8? Eight, eight? That's 8-8. Eight, eight. Let me see if it's updated. Not yet, but it will be. So okay. nice result there. So that brings us to Hikaru versus Wang Hao. I mean, one of the big matchups yes. of the entire... The 2,700 the entire monsters are battling each other. 
Yeah. Hikaru was getting noise complaints before. I'm sure they've gone up through the roof until then. It's like 4 a.m. <laughs> his time now. No problem. Yes. Yeah, and the players in the rooms next to him are probably also playing in the tournament, huh? <laughs> so they've got like reason to complain. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to sleep for their game tomorrow. Hikaru's like, I don't need sleep. I'll play Pro Chess League and then whip everyone in Gibraltar anyway, you know? They're like, I'm playing Yvonne Chuck in the morning. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I understand both sides. Um, yeah. Okay, so. And Hikaru's like, I'm playing Wang Hao right now. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, just going back and forth. I'm sure chat can confirm if they've seen his stream as well. Yeah. Oh, can I fix the bo All right. the? Well, Hikaru's yeah. just made a a, a a move that surprised me here. D3. Sorry about that. Where does that move come from? D3. Uh, sorry, just. That is really surprising to me. There we go. Okay. So he played D3 on. Yeah. Interesting move. Twenty. Move 20. It's kind of a shocking move to me. I mean, right? Because he's he's letting White bring in another strength pawn, in the center, strength in the center, right? another pass pawn. What is he thinking here? So he's. I mean, I understand he's scrambling for counterplay with like a pawn sack. Yep. Right. He's down a pawn, but he has some chances. Mm -hmm. But this move here, it's kind of surprising because like the C two and E four pawns both look like potential slight weaknesses for White, and then he plays D three. So now what? Now what? That's, that's a good question. Rook c1. That's interesting. I was thinking queen b3. Sorry, I was just looking at the score between them. So it's 5.5 to 6.5 for the slugger. So Hikaru's on okay. the team that has Small a lead it. here. But this right. game is really important. He's So he could play it safe, but Hikaru sometimes doesn't have the most confidence in his teammates and sometimes... <sighs> He feels like he's got to like go four zero or three and a half if he wants his team to win. Okay. Um, I mean, I, maybe his team's a little bit better this year, but I remember seeing that sometimes last year that he would like press too hard and and then say, "Well, I I, I really needed if I don't go four zero, my team doesn't quite have the firepower." Right, and the the um, he is kind of like a team captain, and you do get motivated about how your team captain is doing during the game, you know. I wonder if bishop f4 is enough counterplay for him here, sort of trying to force the rook mm -hmm. trade and then play rook c3 with the second rook. Right. I'm just going to look at that quickly. So playing rook c3 after is the main idea here. Um, let's see. White could play rook a1. That's not really going to stop anything. He doesn't want to get back rank maiden. Maybe g3 to make space for his king first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Logical would be g3 and then... Maybe there's some way for, well, but then also there's another piece hanging on the third row, right? The knight, too. Right, which is not looking so promising. Um, mm. I, I do like that because, whoops, I flipped the board accidentally. It is a little bit more challenging, and if you are down a pawn in some type of endgame, any counterplay like that is much needed. It's funny watching Hikaru torment himself when he sees a sharp line he wants to take, but he might give up the draw. <laughs> Aww, he's playing like a team player. That's so funny, Irish exit. Yeah, I'm guessing some of you guys are watching him as well. Uh, he's calculating nice. Okay. That makes sense. He's calculating. <laughs> yeah, who would have guessed? Sorry about that. If I were streaming while playing, my entire stream would just be me like this, <laughs> never saying anything. <laughs> but I've seen NBL stream, and he was just... Like talking about all kinds of stuff, looking at his teammates' games, like playing Puzzle Rush. So I imagine Hikaru can manage both playing and talking. But right. maybe, maybe down upon against Wang Hao, it'll be time to time to actually to be quiet for a little bit and just. Well, you know, when he's not talking animates. anymore, that it's serious. Uh, maybe we should also look quickly at Daniel Narodidsky's game. Um, same same team. San Francisco mm -hmm. Mechanics and the Seattle Sluggers. What are your first thoughts when you start looking at this position? Um, well, my first thought was, oh my god, his rook's on f7. <laughs> Same, yep. Um, and then I saw king f7, queen f3, and I thought, okay, that's actually pretty simple. It's not some like exciting long-term piece sack. Right. And now we see rook to g4, and I'm thinking like, huh. Now we get queen that f2 looks, that looks, protecting that, looks that rook. Yeah. That looks risky. Okay. Um, it looks like 
Sargisian's taking the fun out of this stuff. Um, if Rook F4, maybe he's going Knight D3. Right. Um, Where else is he going to move his Rook? Nowhere. I don't see anywhere, really. So he can't... He doesn't have a good square for his Rook. The only other idea would be to try to attack something and get Counterblay. Mm -hmm. um, but... I don't any move like h3 looks super awkward okay so he's defend right. he's not he's just giving up the rook there was no other option just giving up the exchange getting his queen into f7 yep um while they're opposite called bishops he'll have some some threats but it's got to happen pretty fast because once black's able to play like queen e8 or something and chase his queen out he will not have much right and queen e8 maybe even queen g6 in the future yeah. The, mm -hmm. and then suddenly white is going to be the one who has to deal with an attack here yeah very easy to to turn around who's attacking who when you've got opposite colored bishops right uh if rook to f4 they're still asking in chat then it was knight to d3 from black attacking the queen and the rook yep sorry I'll, I'll go back here so if he didn't double and he played rook f4 we had knight d3 and then we got these two threats going on here yeah okay um so that is looking good for for Seattle, uh, yeah. Gargesian, big time. Yep. Um, there's been some action in Hikaru's game. Okay, back to it. He did he did play Bishop F4? Yep. And Wang how did not trade rooks? Yep. So this is the line we were looking at before you guys. We said that if they traded rooks, then Hikaru was going to get his rook onto C3, which seemed to have enough counterplay for him. So what mm -hmm. Wang Hao did instead was decline that rook trade hikaru still got to play c3 mm -hmm. um and he just pushed d4 letting b3 hang in exchange for a6 okay yeah makes sense so all quite logical um but it feels like hikaru's played this very well and has enough for his pawn for sure i mean that b pawn is Everyone's probably heard of putting rooks behind past pawns, right. but a rook in front and behind is even better, actually. It keeps, it like controls the whole file and doesn't right. let the opponent do anything you're doing. Right. That's, that's a good way of explaining it. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard a teacher say it like that before, but nicely put. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and the sluggers are ahead of point going into this round. So it looks very good for them at the moment on these, on these top boards. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. Is there anybody? I don't know how the bottom boards are going. Right, we but... didn't look at any of the bottom boards yet. Oh, sorry, I pressed into the wrong game. What about their fourth boards? Let's see how that's going. The fourth board is the one board where Seattle is going to be really outrated this round. Right. Um, so that's Jason Yu against Ladia Jurasek. Um, material Why is. is equal at the moment but, but black, the black yeah black pieces are like all out and the white ones are not right so. and i'm gonna demonstrate this by quickly flipping the board and seeing how much happier we look all of a sudden okay um okay this yeah. is not looking nice for white no this is um i mean it's it, i don't see anything decisive like sargesian you know just capturing rooks right but also jason Yu has 25 seconds to eight minutes and a half 25 seconds on move 18. yep yep i just know so he's been under pressure since like the first move of this game pretty much yeah he definitely has like. and just a simple move g6 i didn't see anything better either just telling the knight on g3 that he's dead yep and if a rook comes to d1 the knight b2 will probably win for black mm -hmm. And it's great to play a quiet move. He had to move play knight d1. This is so sad. Also, doesn't f4 now just win a piece? Mm, trap the knight. It can go to h1, but yeah, that knight's pretty close to oh, dead. Oh, right, right. I forgot about h1. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Well, and then and then you can also play rook e2 after the knight goes to h1. Oh, so. man. This is it's... another position that it's... hurts just looking at it and imagining yeah. being white here. It's a, it's a nicely grisly situation right okay so yeah uh, let's so, let's check back let's see something else actually maybe his knight's headed to d4 so you can go like f4 knight h1 knight d4 and then just checkmate on e2 uh, oh my gosh <laughs> that would be so funny i'm just gonna uh, 
make a random move to show the mate that David is talking about. Look at this. That'd be so nice. It'd be like a helpmate, but that's okay. Because with this position, it's basically already a helpmate in and of itself. Ooh, and look <laughs> at Hikaru's B pawn going. Look at Hikaru's B pawn wow. going. Wow. This... No way. Yeah. If Hikaru is... pulls this off, uh, we. This is the rook in front and behind thing. You're right. You did point that like, out. It's so White powerful. White couldn't get to the B file in time to establish a blockade anywhere reasonable. By now, the pawn's like coming to you know B2, and then it's too late to blockade it. Yeah. Um, okay, but so this isn't. This almost looks like it's winning for Black just because he's so close to promoting. Yeah. But no way yeah. that can be true. It it is. It's over. Okay. Well, I guess it yeah. can be true then. Um, Black can play Rook C one here, I think, and then on pawn takes F four, play B two, and Rook C one. Okay, mm -hmm. right. He can't take back because we take with the bishop. So you were saying if he grabs the pawn here he just has b2 which makes sense because there's nothing stopping the promotion oi oof hikaru yeah, somebody what said a killer in, somebody said in chat b2 would be a mistake because b2 rook b1 rook c1 white sacks the rook on b2 then takes the bishop on f4 and white's doing yep fine to winning actually um or fine to better but with rook c1 first that's that's gg yeah and of course that's hikaru saw that I, I want to take there. a look at Hikaru's face. He's not even smiling. He's just like no. business as usual. That's the face I'm getting from, from looking well, at this. Well, this is like epic. Didn't he just do 4-0 at 4 a.m.? He did. That was pretty he epic. He just went 4-0 at 2 a.m. So maybe he's too tired to smile, but Fair he'll enough. feel good about it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> True. And that you don't normally say that. You normally feel bad about it tomorrow. But yeah. anyway. Okay. Let's... Let's look. Okay, so All so right. Seattle nice Sluggers are, are going to win. Um, I guess we can look at somebody else's match. So Because Hikaru's winning his game. Uh, their fourth yeah. board is winning, so they're going to have at least eight and a half. We... No, their their fourth board was in bad shape, but Sargisian was oh, winning right. on board too. Right, thanks. Against Anya. Yeah. yeah. So let's see if there's so. any other interesting games. Maybe we can look okay. at... The next match that would be... Finishing up might be the uh, hackers and and kangaroos might be the next right. match to come down to the wire. So are any of them still playing right now? Yep, I'm looking at the game between Raymond Song and yeah. Grandmaster Kirilla. Yeah. All right, crucial. Yeah, this is crucial, and it's a very fun game because. So the kangaroos started out down three one. They've mounted a huge comeback. They were down three one in the first match, right? And now yeah. they're six five. So way to go, kangaroos! You're not leading the pack for no reason. Yeah. And how is this game going? Let's see. So it was an English opening that Kirill played looks, here. Looks good for white. It looks good no, for I mean, white. Five is incredible. Yeah, and and black does have his pawn on h4, but he doesn't have any of the usual techniques with h3, queen f3, threatening mate because of that strong bishop on d5. So. Yeah, because white's basically trying to take on e7. If not e7, then f7. Yep. So. So, so he can't take yet on f7. No, it right. doesn't work yet. But let's see. He can also just take the b6 pawn. I also thought bishop c6 was interesting. I guess he okay, didn't want to yeah. get rook c8 after that. And queen f4 was like the zero risk approach. Queen f4 right. just trying to trade queens and attack f7. Like, I'm already up a pawn. Yeah. To just simplify. No, he wanted to grab one more pawn, which is respectable. Another pawn, yeah. yeah. Fair. Yeah, C Christian's been playing pretty well this round. Um, Daniel Narodisky yeah. just lost his game. Okay. So why don't we just we were expecting. So take that's... a quick look at the final position there. Yeah. Um... And uh, Ladia also won the game that we were expecting with the night trap on H1. Okay, so I'll we'll just leave those games for now. Um, yeah. Let's see. Who who else is playing on this team? We have... Okay. I went back to the Andrew and Bryce Tiglin game, but that one's all about to end, and Bryce Tiglin is definitely winning. Oh, he's up a piece, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So Seattle's going to win by several points in the end here. What about the game between um... Cameron Wheeler and Bai Jinshur, just because it looks interesting? 
Yeah, it looks like they're scoring 3-1 in this round. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Cameron and Baijin Shi. All right. Yes, the Black King is being menaced. Right. Menaced. Um. So the the Black Queen is on E2, which is great right. because if the White Queen tries anything like H6, which he just did, at least mm -hmm. after Black moves his king, he has some type of threat on D1. Yeah. Oof. Okay, rook f1 makes sense. The material's very close to equal up to this point, but white needs another ingredient here for his attack. Mm -hmm. He can't just aim at h7. The knight's got that covered. Right. G6 would be a way to try and break through at some point. Yep. Um, it doesn't work yet because he can take with the f pawn. Um, yeah. He can't take with the h pawn because we have queen h8. He can't take with the knight because we have queen h7. But he can take with the F-pawn, and there isn't anything white can do yet. Yeah. And then, um, well, actually, if he takes with the F-pawn, can't white play rook F8 check? Uh, takes with the F-pawn. Oh, very nicely done. You're right. So that is a threat. I'll just make a random move for black to show what. Yeah. Uh, the G6 is yeah. actually kind of a threat here. Yeah, look at this. Eliminating the defender on F8. Nicely pointed out. So this is the threat. So G6 works. Mm -hmm. no matter what black does the only other thing he can do is take with a knight on e5 mm -hmm. but then white has bishop g5 and if the rook moves bishop f6 right and i just played that on the board again to show what the crazy threats are in this position yeah okay so cameron's got some ideas one option for black might be to move the knight from e5 to g6 right away to block that and another idea would be knight g4 disrupting white's pieces big time. Right. Attacking the queen so that g6 doesn't work there. Well, if only it was white's turn to move here, right? I guess that would work yeah. in any type of attack. If it were white's turn to move here, g6 would be a big deal. Right. Okay, so we'll see how black, black defends this. I, I do like the move you said, knight g4. It seems to just be a very prickly attack here. Also looking at e3, and if the queen gets kicked out of there, all of a sudden his attack is starting to diminish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how white keeps anything going after knight g4. I guess knight g4, mm -hmm. queen h5, and then if knight e3, you have queen f7, king h8, g6. Queen, no, queen, queen h, d2 mate. Queen h7? No time for g6. But, g6? But, or, um, but queen f6 would be enough to draw. Yeah, queen f6 at least get a perpetual, which I think he'd be hoping for in this line. Yeah, um, yeah. I just wanted to check mate. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> but I don't even know if black has to take on e3 right away. No, I guess I guess to. that would be nice for black, though, to also get the pressure off. The only other move he could do here, because he has to defend on f7, um, would be... Would be lifting a rook. Lifting a rook. I was also going to say knight e5, because black also wants to trade queens, but li lifting, a, lifting a rook to d7 is also nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, so Hikaru won the game. Okay. Nicely done. So, 4 no, Very well done by him. Yep. 4-0, so the Seattle Sluggers have officially won their match 8.5 to 6.5. Nicely done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. What game? I'm looking right now at the game with Christian and Raymond Song just because I was automatically here, but Christian is up a piece, so he's... Oh, wait, no, sorry. He's not up a piece yet. Because black can now take the bishop back. Huh. And he's getting in time pressure. Okay. Some kind of... Oh! I lied. He is up a Eight piece. Seconds. He is up a piece. There was some kind of small lag. and. Okay. Did it look like he was about to flag? For me, I saw it go all the way down to three seconds. And then suddenly he played two moves and had eight seconds. Got it. Uh, Which means he must have actually had four or five seconds, not three. Right. But Yeah, and he does have the extra piece. Wait. Um, so you can't take on d4 because you're getting mated, right? With rook f8? Wait a second, no, because you can block with the queen. With the queen on h6, yeah. This is not, not working. 
Because queen h6. So so then why yeah. why can't you take on d4 is my question. Uh, I don't see why not, actually. I don't see why not at all. Maybe, no, because queen a8 doesn't work either to try and come with a rook because you just block with rook d8. Wow, I think Raymond's thinking. Raymond's thinking. I wonder if Christian do you realize, blundered. Do you realize that, that... Wow. Realize? Oh, this is only the third round for them. I was going to say, I was going to say, like, this Raymond guy is doing really well again. <laughs> he saved them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, this is... He just took... The kangaroos are coming back. This is a really good result for Raymond. Wow. Um, oh, yeah. You can just check on the second round. Look how... On the second rank. Look how fast he's doing this. Uh, Christian, yeah. Well, and Raymond, too. Like, he, he thought several moves ahead, right? And then played six moves, like... That's true. Instantly. So he's not giving... Christian much much time even if Raymond has a minute he's still playing the moves quickly uh, yeah. he does have to be a little bit careful here because it, it is does, harder for that black was maybe to a play good idea, bringing his king in yeah. to defend the e-pawn he thought just enough yep and Christian's repeating the position are they just going to agree to draw here or is Christian gaining time Christian's gaining time but you take on gaining e5 time. and nothing left to do this guy is really this guy is a problem everybody else in the pacific division take note yeah. Raymond song is a problem <laughs> in a good way <laughs> in a good way he's a but problem I mean, like, if you're, boys if you're on any team other than australia i'm telling you this this is a problem yeah fair enough to try okay. and beat their team yeah it's just now now it's a straight up draw um yeah okay so the games are really wrapping up why yeah. aren't they come on guys just yeah, draw yeah, they yeah. drew so we can move on in peace um is is there a game in part Ooh, okay i was gonna ask but what about the luke velotti game against anthony yep. he because that is Knight spicing F up thick. here it comes 96 next i imagine yeah more explosions both knights hit both pawns um yeah this looks like an open sicilian at the key moment so so let's see five to six five and a half to six and a half okay this match is really close um but we're looking at the Pan chengdu panda games right now because the other games are just mm -hmm. getting started so this is totally fine we'll we'll catch the san jose yeah. hackers soon yeah we'll see the decisive round in a moment for that but right now we got two games that are really far developed here in this match mm -hmm. um this should be a, a, a winning move for, for the Destin here, knight f6. Yep. A very um, critical win for them since it's 4-6, so they want to get it as close as possible going into that last match here. If bishop takes f6, okay. knight e6, there's a lot to calculate, I'm afraid. <laughs> there is a lot to calculate. Um, I, I'm going to reset the board for a second. I mean, yeah. even before calculating these lines, it looks like white is at least grabbing another pawn. Mm -hmm. um, sh he has to be a little bit careful about his king side here, but yeah. it, it, it's pretty clear that Luke has the ex the advantage here, and he just has to find the best line. Um, yeah. Maybe we can take a quick look at our our friend Chess Fat Bear or Grandmaster Zhao Jun. Uh huh. This position is actually very closed. Right. This one looks like it could go a lot longer still. Yeah. If they had time on the clock, they could play another. It could be one of those seven-hour games, right? It could. Where like, well after the second time control, you're like moving your first pawn exchange. Right. But international master okay, Titus Stramavicious is in time yep. pressure once again. This is not the mm -hmm. first time we've seen him in time pressure. Um, yeah. Okay. Just gonna trade it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I, White's pawn Don't structure. Give white, file. white has double pawns, but so does black. the The advantage is that white has a knight. The position is closed, and the open h file is much more in favor of white here, since he has two pawns by his king. So his king is slightly safer here. Maybe in the future, something like. E6 could be interesting, but not now. Yeah. The white queen might even be good on D4 opposite the bishop. Oh, interesting. 
normally you don't want to be on that line, right. but you overprotect e5 and you threaten to penetrate on b6 and a7, so there's a lot for black to defend. Yep. And then later you can play like a4, rook a1 to coordinate with the queen. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a really great plan for white here. So you prefer attacking on the queen side instead of the king side here. Maybe. Uh, there might be some good plans on the king side too. Queen e2 to g4. Right. Could be. But I, also with your idea of queen d2, we were threatening taking the bishop and just gobbling up that d-pawn. So right. White is the only I one making trying to tie here. black down, make them play like rook d8 as well, and then come creeping. Right. Okay. In a good way. Good good creeping. Yeah, there, there could be good creeping, at least when you're talking about a chess position. All right. He came back to d2. Oh, man. Okay, queen d2. So he changed He changed his mind. He liked your plan. Exactly. He heard you. He's like, he's like, well, queen g4 is not working out. So Oh, there goes the first free Let's pawn. Okay, there you go, Jiao Jun. Yeah. Grabbing the pawn when your opponent gets under five minutes. I think the pandas are one of the teams with the best time management from what I've seen so far. They're uh -huh. almost always up on time, and they use it so well to put their, posi their opponents in hard-to-play positions that they just end up blundering small things like a pawn or slight inaccuracy oh so now this bishop is kind of in trouble here if white goes knight f2 yeah and then um, g4 coming yeah yeah and the only reason to go to f2 instead of like knight d6 or something is because when black plays bishop d3 you're gonna take it with the knight so right right you win a second pawn there yeah very nicely yeah. pointed up saw it all coming and uh wow he's really he's collecting here he is he is. He may even trade once and then play g5 or king g2 before taking on d3 to not give black this g5 move. Yeah, I think he'll trade once and play g5. So that he doesn't even have to get any right. counterplay from black because obviously... Because the pawn on d3 won't go anywhere. Yeah, because if he takes right away on d3, I'll put the position you're talking about on the board. g5... Mm -hmm. If you take with the bishop, rook takes f3. There's just no reason to give black counterplay when you have such a crushing position. Right. So I really like that you pointed out that he should remove all of hope. black's threats. Yeah. That definitely gives hope. And a move like g5 is just like the nail. Yeah. And also, um, Luke Villotti just won his game. I'll just quickly okay. show the final position. It looked like he was able to squeeze through that. He checkmated almost his opponent. Uh, after he moved his king, he was... Go what? Actually, after he would have played king g8... Oh, okay, never mind. Free queen. Okay. <laughs> Easy. That was like... Yeah. That was like briefly pretty exciting, that game. Yep. Briefly exciting. Okay. But uh, very nicely done by Luke. Yeah. Some good, some good violence there coming into e6. Good violence. So many rules that are okay in chess, but not in the real world. <laughs> chess is like the opposite of the real world right. for me. A lot of people use it as like... A metaphor all the time right life is like chess is like yeah. chess is like life life is like chess or whatever but for me it's like got a ton of things that you just don't do in real life <laughs> well th it's good to hear that you have morals <laughs> yeah <laughs> um oh okay wait so is this interesting at all for black because he's trying to go for any type of perpetual here right so what he did was he played the g5 move we talked about then black sacked his deep on to at least get the queen in yeah um, so black's still down two pawns, but this way white never let the black bishop or rook into the game. Right. So it's just the queen. White can chase her out. Yeah. Um, Chasing out, right. and then he just has his two pawn up. It's actually not too hard to yeah. force an exchange here either. No, this shouldn't be too hard, it's looking to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Whoa, we should Whoa. quickly go... He just, left, he just left his queen there for rook h2, so... Yeah, this game is over. That, that allows us to move on. I, I, I was about to say, we should quickly look at uh, Bobby Chang and Kirilla's game, because that is heating up, and Bobby has 14 minutes and 30 seconds on his clock. What is this? And Kirilla has all his pieces on the 8th rank. I'm just preparing you for what you're about to see here. Oh, man. Sorry. Tell me again. Uh, I was saying the game between Grandmaster Kirilla and Bobby Chang is not looking okay. so hot. I mean, okay, I, I didn't even right, pay huh? attention to the pawns Whoa. yet just because white looks like they're about to destroy and black uh -huh. hasn't heard about development yet. But Oh, but this is like opening theory, right? Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
Oh, I'm, okay. I, I, I don't play the Grunfeld, so I've never seen lines like I this. I don't either. But I don't. thank you for pointing that out. I do remember Kirill as a Grunfeld expert, so I'm going to you know, put my hand in, in my mouth and uh, just wait yeah. what happens here. It might be theory, but it doesn't look pretty to the Yeah, he surely naked knows eye. this. Look, Bobby Chang has 14 and a half minutes, and he just played 96, Knight C7, 96, Knight C7. Like, he could have just... He could have just played a draw there. Um, he he knew all the way to that option, and then he went for rookie four. So he's showing off his 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 prep here. Okay, I guess I could have guessed that with that much time, there must be some preparation here. Yeah. I'm just looking. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, the other games are not nearly this uh, developed. <laughs> All right, so chat, uh, Chess Fat Bear or Zhao Jun just won. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we knew that was going to happen. So let's get yeah. underway to the San Jose Hacker and Australia Kangaroo final face down here. Let's check out Serana for a moment. How's, how's he doing so far today? Okay. Um, his results so far are 3 and 0. 3 and 0. Quietly winning and winning and winning. All right, so... He's playing Eltaj Safarli. Um, that's San Jose Hackers' third free agent first board. They went Mamadyarov, Mamadov, Safarli. What's the pattern, folks? Uh, I like that. What's the pattern uh, there uh, with their three free agents? They are stealing the Azeri's talent. That's okay. They've got the Azeri national team playing for them. Yep. The entire Azeri national Bring team. Bring on the Azeri's. Okay. Yeah, they probably want to play the Armenia Eagle in the last round. <laughs> in the finals. Yeah, no pressure there. Okay, let's but not okay, get political Serana's here. Okay, Serana's position here. Serana's position here. It looks like there's a potential to eventually lose to Bishop G4. Um, Safarli is also 3-0 on the day. So they're these two opponents both have won all their games. Nice. Yeah. So this is this is the big clash here for this match yep what what would you prefer to play here definitely, definitely white. white definitely white i've asked you some harder Is white down a pawn yeah white's down a pawn i didn't even really feel it that much but somehow they the a pawn was sacked at some point right and uh yeah i don't know i think like bishop g4 at some point Bish is gonna bishop hurt. G4. i'm not sure how we're gonna defend that yeah bishop g4 looks pretty scary um after scout <clears throat> excuse me bishop g4 we're threatening to just take on e6 and win a pawn back um mm -hmm. the knight can't move obviously because then black would hang the rook on d7 so what would black do after bishop g4 is what we have to figure out here is queen d8 yeah a move to just sort of keep the ball in play for a moment i think queen d8 is a great suggestion because if uh, the queens get Played traded it. off, rook rook takes, doubling up, and then all of a sudden there's not two pieces attacking the knight anymore. So yeah, I, I'm gonna go back because moves were made. A lot of moves were yep. made. Okay. Yeah. Hang on. Sorry. Whoa. So this line that I played actually just got played on the board. Yep. So it all. <laughs> there happens. we go. It all happened. It all happened. I mean, these two guys are both three and zero. They're machines. They they play all the moves. Yep. Um, rook to a one from Eltage. This is tricky. If rook to a seven, rook takes b five, and if rook to a eight, rook takes b five. So, seems like he's regaining his pawn here. Yep. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some complications. He might have to watch out for rook a six, f five, e takes f five, knight c seven. So he might not even be threatening rook a six here. Because of um, sorry, so let's say... Like, I don't know what black plays, but let's say black plays king f8. Sure. So and then rook takes a6. Rook takes a6. f5. f5. Okay. And then knight to c7 might mess up yep. the whole thing. Yep, there's no way to stop this nasty People looking People in fork. chat are saying that Bobby won the game already? What are you saying? Is that possible? Um, hang on. Bobby won his game. I mean, it's it's possible, but I don't see the result yet. Maybe there he's just completely winning. Yeah, I'm not seeing the game. Maybe it's already gone. Maybe he did win. He won so quickly that we don't see the game. Huh. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, let, let's keep looking then at the games we have on the yeah, board, and true. somebody in chat can confirm that. Yeah, it looks like he did lose the game. I see. I, it only lasted two moves longer than what we had seen before. It's a uh, slackadaisical versus the count. You might still. I I, have I it think there. I already closed closed out of it. Okay. So Bobby won. See, I told you that looked bad for Black. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. He, he lost three moves there. Wow. Yeah. Well, he took he took. He took Trilla on in Trilla's preparation. Yeah. And uh, he was just so prepared for this game, Bobby Chang. Oh my goodness. Crypto Chess opening theory puke face. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's true. I mean, he won without, with like having to find like one puzzle rush tactic after playing like 15, after playing 25 moves that he knew by heart. He played right. one simple puzzle rush tactic, yeah. probably problem two. I, I, do, I don't have the board uh, open yeah. yet, so I think I'll just go, I'll keep an eye on a couple so other it games, went. but. So it went, and that's a big point for Australia. I mean, that puts them at seven and a half here. Let's see. Uh, the other games are still getting going. Yeah, okay, sorry. So, so which game do we want to take a quick look at? Um, ooh, what about the game between, no, we can sh look at Dallas Destiny a little later since yep. they're there. We're going to, yeah. we're going to wait a moment to get to that. Yep. Um, what about the fourth board? So the, the famous Raymond yeah. song. Rook A1. Well, I mean, Eltage and, and, and Serana, there's, it's such a matchup. I think we should probably just stick with them as long as they're moving, which they are. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Uh, so I'm back at this game where okay, we were so, last. So we were at move 34. Yep. So rook a one, f five. One seemed indefensible. Yep. And he just played f five right away. Mm -hmm. Then knight c seven, rook d two, g f five. So he just sacks a kingside pawn, but keeps the a file closed. Yep. So it's nice that Safar League was able to get his pawn back, but yeah. Now he's going to have to... Well, hey, Black has a nice center, but it's not an opening anymore, so it doesn't matter so much. No, and the bishop seems superior to the knight here. Um, I mean, the center definitely gives the knight some opportunities, but it feels a little harder to play for Black to me. Right. Why did... Like, White's got, White's got the h-file. You always have to worry about rook h6, rook h5, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. His bishop's covering some annoying squares. Right, and neither of those two pawns, as powerful as they look, are actually pass pawns. So at some point, they might actually either need to push and become a little bit more weak, or they're just a target for white already. Yeah. So we'll find out how pure is Serana's defensive technique once again. Right. Okay. Um, his team only needs one more half point to draw the match and one more point to win. Yep. Um, so if they're thinking for a moment, we can go to board four like you wanted, see how Soggy Cheese and Raymond Song are doing. Yeah, it seemed like they were a little further into the end game where Raymond is up a pawn, although it's a pawn on E3, so it's you know not the best advantage, but he's the only one pushing here, so I think they can feel mm -hmm. confident that he'll get at least a draw, and they've at, at least, least tied draw. the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's trying to get the A7 pawn. Mm -hmm. And he didn't take it right away. Because of G5. Yeah. Yep. So he wanted to get his bishop out of the way of that first. Right, because after g5, the white knight needs to move, and the bishop on e6 is hanging, unfortunately. Someone suggested a move I like, which is h4 for white. h4. I, I really like that approach, because then yeah. you just come back with bishop e6 when there's no g5. Wait. What? Well, I guess what Raymond <laughs> did was good enough, because black just, just black resigned. Just resigned. Yeah, I, I didn't even get to see the moves. I just saw the resignation. Um... Oh man! Oh wait, 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 wait. So he protected That's a good approach, rook d three, rook d two, rook a four. Um, he resigned because he's threatening it, are you b6. on the game? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's threatening b six. Yeah. And the rook has to defend the bishop on d six. Yep. 
And if the rook goes back to d8, then white plays rook a7. And then yeah, and just wins the pawn. Continues. And... I mean, I right. don't know. I guess I thought he could have fought this out a little bit longer. Yeah, in a team event, you would often see people fight this out a little bit further. But um... I mean, it's fair to say it's, it's losing. But again, yeah. we've seen people turn around losses. We have seen some big turnarounds. But there's no time pressure here. Raymond has 12 minutes, so okay. Yeah, All right. that's true. So that wins the match for the Kangaroos. Nice. So the Kangaroos have won. Um, we're, we're back at a, a little bit at the Serana game we were looking at just to see what mm -hmm. happened. Like you said, the H file, yeah. very powerful. Wait, Rook has managed to push the Black King all right. the way back to the 8th rank. He's harassing him. It looks like he could win the pawn on d5 if he wanted to go into this Rook endgame. Right, just by trading and taking. Yeah. Uh, or was there Rook to d6? Yeah, maybe there was Rook to d6. I, I didn't get enough time okay, to Okay, so it that. wasn't that simple. Yeah. Um... Because that endgame would be pretty good with the outside G-pawn and your king coming to E4 to attack the isolated E-pawn. Right. Okay, so it's not that easy just yet. Okay. Um, so how does white continue this here? Let's see. F4 looks like an interesting move uh, because if black moves the pawn either by taking her on E4, then all of a sudden D5 is the target again. But... Black always has that re rook d6 to match if he ever takes on d5. So maybe not f4. I think bishop c2 might be a, a move that makes serious progress. Bishop c2, right, because we're eyeing bishop f5. Yeah. Probably black has to stop with e4 here. And then that's the progress I wanted to make. Then I come back to b3. To b3. This is actually very clean. Force black to get into a slightly worse position than he is now. And that d5 pawn looks weak. But white still can't take, which is a little annoying. He played f4. He played f4. Oh, okay. Well, well. That's surprising to me. Right. Because um, with white, I'd be like really holding off on pawn trades unless it was a clear advantage being being built. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked the look of this move at first, but then... Now white has a slightly weak pawn as well. Yeah, something that he's got to think about. You know, if the king moves up here, we might see moves like knight e6 from black, and there will be some, you know, instead of defending the d5 pawn, black will start having some little options of their own. Right. So I guess the advantage for white here is that his king can get into the play slightly faster than black. Yeah, his king can get a little closer in he could advance this past pawn yeah. eventually like to f5 or something with like bishop c2 or something mm -hmm. and how would you explain the dynamic here between having a bishop in the position versus having a knight i mean i still think this favors the bishop a bit because mm -hmm. of the bishop's ability to switch around but it's also partly that black's knight has never been on the best square so that right. Kind of hurts it as well right the knight's been on the back foot on c7 only defending pawns yeah it's not on a square defended by a pawn like c4 which even right. is it's annoying yeah. yeah so it's definitely not had its best opportunities to shine just yet mm -hmm. but certainly the bishop's really good here it can target the black pawns it can help black move the f pawn and it can help oh sorry it can white, help white yeah, move the no f pawn and it could help white to whip up some kind of attack because two rooks and a bishop there were variations where white sort of starts to make attacking threats right because the bishop is just so good at cutting off the space from the king and supporting the rook from whatever distance mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay uh yeah i mean somebody somebody in chat uh crypto chess uh which i guess is i am cats right He's saying that the knight is fine. The real problem is the d5 pawn sucks. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brings up the point that, like, the knight and the pawn, like, the pieces in the pawn structure are often only as good as each other, right? right. Like, like, if you could magically have a different pawn structure and then put your knight somewhere, maybe your knight would be great. But, like, part of it is how, how good is your knight with your current pawn structure? How good is your pawn structure with your current set of pieces? Mm -hmm. Maybe your pawn structure would be fine if you had a dark squared bishop instead of a knight. Right. But you have a knight, right. so... Um, yeah, this move, 96, definitely allows rook h7, d7, taking on d5 with check. Yeah, so so um, he can just take, 
Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but actually, if he takes on d7, he takes on f4 instead of taking, taking the f4 king. with check first. Yeah, because otherwise he just loses a pawn, so he has to. Man. Has to take. Serana, like every time you think that you've finished him, it, there's like, wait, there's one more. One little, more thing, yeah. One more stupid little I'm thing. I'm not here. giving you a pawn so easily. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, the guy hasn't lost a game for a couple of weeks. Right. So. But hey, for, for three for three weeks. But I think. Safarli has hasn't three. lost a game in at least three, hasn't so been. not you know yeah. still still a toughie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but this is Farley's first match, and Serana's played three matches. Yeah, Alexi Serana. I don't. Do you know how old is he? Eighteen. 18 I think. Right. Eighteen. Yeah. He's still got a lot of room. Yeah. So. Man, I mean, how... how <laughs> Crypto chess, wipe? that's nothing. I haven't lost a game in, like, four hours. <laughs> well, neither have we, you know. I haven't played one in four hours, but uh, yeah. not a bad result. Okay. So, how, how would one beat him? I mean, clearly White's position is a bit better, but, like, how would we ever win a game against this guy? Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> what's we... the winning strategy here, right? I agree. We have the slightly better pieces, but now my F4 pawn is hanging. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, Serana hadn't had a threat in like 15 moves. Right. Right. I mean, I could just play <laughs> Rook H4 back and protect my pawn, but then I've done accomplished nothing. <laughs> Maybe rook h4 and then trying to take on d5 in the future is an idea. Mm-hmm. Rook h4 here. Yeah, yeah it's an idea. Uh, it's an idea. That's what it is. <laughs> definitely an idea. No, I, I don't know. Black might play rook d to f7. Right. Instead of Leave protecting the pawn, completely. just going to attack on f4. Going for the f pawn. Black might also have some possibility of knight g5 check. Yeah. And, and this was um, actually related to what you said earlier. We were surprised at f4 because now white also has a weak pawn. Right. So th- this is exactly that's what why it's created. It's, that's why it's his first threat in like 15 moves. Right. <laughs> Ro- oh, white he, he did take on d7. Different. He did take on d7. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be something like rook f4, yeah. king e3. Yeah. Oh, then rook e4 too, huh? Okay, but if black, if white has to go to g3, that's not really the direction he wants. Yeah. King takes d7, maybe bishop okay, takes let, d5. Let's say he goes to e2 then, because he wants to be on that side. Okay, so king takes d7. Yeah. Uh, bishop takes d5, because we want to have the idea of a discovery. But this just looks super dryish now. Yeah, he can just go rook e4 here. Force the king to go to g3 if white wants to make any progress. Yeah. I, I'm i no longer... Well, maybe Eltaj calculated something. But... I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, there's this line where, like, with the king on g3, king d7, you go bishop d5, and you're threatening to take the knight and then the rook. And if the rook moves, maybe you can play bishop b7 check and bishop takes a6. Right. But that was... you're down to two on one on one side of the board. Yeah, I'll and just put that position back. Other since side. You're looking at it. Um, yeah. I don't know that. I don't know that there's any win here. Right. There's. They're not cut off. And somebody in chat was saying, "Why don't you just take with the rook?" I mean, you can take with the rook. That doesn't really make a difference in this position. Uh, the black king can. I mean, he has to protect his knight here, so he has to go to king e7. And rook e5 doesn't work because of rook f6, if that's what you were alluding to. For um, mitz, mitzads in the chat. Yeah. Okay. All right, so he went there, so he's going to play out the game. King g3, um, yep. Why is he fighting for a win here? I guess because he's slightly better. All right, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Sure, the result is over, but he's slightly better. You know, chess yeah. players want to do well. Um, yeah, and I i mean, while we're watching it, I was just curious if anybody could beat Serana. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a fun game between Anthony He and Cameron Wheeler because the Chengdu okay. Pandas, again, they only need one more point to draw. And okay. uh, Anthony He is going for a an attack on the king side black is obviously countering that by going for an attack on the queen side uh, i i think it's always more fun to play these positions from white's perspective because the prospects of getting a possible checkmate is always more you know 
yeah heart throbbing than, than winning a than pawn winning on the a queen pawn. yeah side. exactly yeah a pawn okay checkmate you know i won a pawn on the queen side exactly. all right they, they agreed drew. to a draw yeah so the match is over and uh wow serana well he didn't go 4-0 this week so fairly fought by him and eltage but uh yeah 12 games without a loss this mm -hmm. season um and now we're down to this match here so how's what else do we have? We've got Jeffrey Xiong. Yep. Um, controlling some outposts on D5 and F5. His pieces are really far forward here yeah, against they Zhao are. Jun. Um, his team's going to need several points. Yep. They're going to have to push. Um, what opening was this game? I think you were asking about the Cameron Wheeler one. It was a King's Pawn. Oh, people are asking about Cameron. Yeah, it was a King's Pawn opening game, E4. <coughs> Here you go. Where? A6, B5? That's Hang not even on. an opening. This is not a thing. I didn't trust chess.com. What the heck is this? He just let Anthony get control of all of the center here? Yeah. This almost looks like it could have been a French at this point. Yeah, well, you know what Cameron's opening was before he came up with A6, B5. He was a French defense player. Okay, I can understand that, being a French defense player myself. Uh, he just he just made a different yeah. order to convert into a type of French. Okay. Yeah, that's French recognized French. Yeah. Bishop A4. Okay. Okay, well, they've played a strange All right, game. I'm, I'm, I'm at the end here. You love trying to analyze close positions like this, says Rec TR DR. Um, I, I like looking at positions that are closed after they finally start opening up. Yeah. So, well, if you like the French, you like you have to like some of this. Exactly. Can't, uh, can't Cameron take on h3 with check here? I mean, didn't this move f4 from him just kind of destroy Anthony's plans of trapping the knight on h6? Yeah. <laughs> take on h3 check, then put his knight on this amazing f5 square. And yeah, all of a sudden... What more could any French player want? Nope, this is the, the French dream, if you will. Can he just take on g... No, he can't take on g5. Um... I thought maybe knight g3 was coming in there, but it was white's mm -hmm. turn to move, so he plays rook h3. <laughs> yeah. But next he next he could have otherwise. All right. Yeah. So queen comes back, and yeah, Cameron's living the French dream for the moment. Yeah, but he he does so he, he looks like he's gonna grab maybe another pawn on g5. So all mm -hmm. white's attack just didn't work out. Cameron's gonna be up pawns, yeah. and then he also has his crushing king side, queen side. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's not over yet. White can play rook to g1, defend g5, mm -hmm. and black still needs to be careful because there are things that can happen. He doesn't have that many pieces on the king side. Okay. Um, you know, white could play queen g2, rook h3, chasing that queen away, and then go for something like knight to g4 to f6 at some point. Interesting. Um, like, if you just have... If you have enough extra pieces in some part of the board... Um, I don't know. I think black always has to respect that. That's fair. Um, but um, but definitely, as people are saying in chat, Anthony should have traded on h6 with his bishop instead of playing g5. Okay. Uh, it really makes one wonder if he missed the move f4 from from. Yeah, Cameron. so instead of playing g5, should have just taken the knight here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's clear. So anyway, um, we'll we'll see. We'll see what 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 he can stir up. Let's see. Let's see some of the other let's games. See. Yeah. Let's see Jeffrey's position. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, so we never said the final score, but for the San Jose Hackers and Australia Kangaroos, six to nine. So. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Okay. Yeah. So the kangaroo, um, the kangaroos are still basically in first place in this division, right? I mean, they've won all three matches. Yep. They managed to stay on, on the top, even with the poor start they had, losing 1-3 to three in the first match. Very nicely done, Kangaroos. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm looking yeah. at the game between right. Grandmaster Jeffrey Seong and Grandmaster Zhao Jun. Right. So <sighs> his position looks amazing. I mean, can he play knight d6? Can he, like, what's... Yeah, can he just take on d6? Can he take okay. on a6? Like, is every pawn hanging? What's wrong? <laughs> Yeah, nice questions you're putting here. 
Um, I. Okay, so he he needed to move that knight because Black was maybe threatening something like Bishop takes a four, Rook takes mm -hmm. a four, Rook takes b four. So I guess it was easier to just take on a six. Right. Um, and again, he's still looking at d six, eyeing that pawn. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So he takes a six first now. D6 is still really hard to defend. The knight on h7 is presumably coming to g5. Oh, he just traded right away. So, okay. Traded right away. And played away. rook c6 very quickly. This is the first yeah. time I've seen Zhao Jun having less time than his opponent, so this is a very exciting moment. Oh, wow. <laughs> the pandas. Yeah, exactly. Oh, their other boards. Well, I don't know if I don't know if Anthony He counts because he is a free agent, but he's down on time. Mm -hmm. Um, but Xu Xian Yu is up on time following their normal pattern, and Bai Jin Shi is up on time following their normal pattern. Right. So it's really just Jeffrey. I mean, Jeffrey's got such a great position. It's really putting some some danger to Zhao Jun here, and he's he's respecting that. Yep. With his time usage. Maybe we should also take a quick look at the game between uh, Grandmaster Xu Xian Yu and. Mm -hmm. International Master Tidas Stremovicius. Okay. Oh yeah, D four, G six hanging. I guess G six is defended. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Black is pushing a lot of pawns, despite. I mean, he just took on C f C takes C four, so this wasn't a pawn push. Oh um, uh, yeah, he he had to crack that open for his G seven bishop. Yep. At some point, but I suppose White could take on g6 before dealing with the pawn on d4, and mm. does. Now what? Knight d5. Queen takes b2. Okay, this oh. this is looking scary. Did he have to allow queen takes b2? I don't think he had to. I think he was trying to win. He thought if he kicks the queen, then he can play knight g6, and right. then if queen g6, he has knight e7. So he was basically like forced winning for white except queen b2 is still complicated right this looks a little bit scary for white um so now I guess he can... he's invested two pawns he has to take care of the queen takes a one threat uh he can play rook c1 if he wants to keep control of the file too but bad then... he can't play knight g6 queen a1 king up queen h1 and then checkmate with the two knights right right queen takes g6 and the bad. and the dream there is not working yeah. Okay. Oh, he just... Did he just castle? I forgot that mm -hmm. he could castle. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that he hadn't gotten checked. Okay, castle makes sense. This makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Uh, 95. Unfortunately, knight e5 looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. It defends the rook on f7. So on knight e7 check, his king can go to h7. Yep, and it also um, eyes the f3 square for later yeah. on. Yeah. It's just, it's just great. It seems to deal with all the threats. Mm-hmm. And leave black up like two pawns probably. Yeah. I mean those those knights look, do look terrifying, but after the king gets on h7, he's he doesn't have any more checks. Yeah. Titus ticking low on time. Yeah. Trying to find something. And we've seen him get low on time, yeah, at least three games now. We have seen it before. Uh, so it's a struggle. Um, you know. For how amazing Jeffrey's position is, it's not that easy to play. And he has retreated his knight from f5. And he's doubling up on the a file, mm -hmm. trying to maintain the knight on a6. Right. He's being prevented from playing b4, b5 by the attack on c4. Mm -hmm. He's being prevented from playing knight b4 now by the doubled rooks. So he's kind of. Right, can't go back there. He's kind of stuck here. He is stuck. stuck at the is moment. it an idea to try to bring the knight from the king's side over to help? He can't right away because b3 is hanging, so he has to fix that. Yeah. And a move like rook b1 doesn't work because he can still take on c4. Um, yeah, so many things to fix so right now. Wow, I can't believe that. Or actually, that even just rook a7 game. and then the knight is forced to move exactly. where rook where because if knight before then you just lose the rook on a4 okay wait can he even no i guess not sorry no worries um i was thinking about sacking on c4 and going for the back rank but no okay 
Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sack like that later on in the move. Yeah. Uh, I actually am surprised at how difficult this is to play for white. Isn't it weird? Like, he seemed to be dominating yeah, and... And it's all because that knight is so crippled on where to go. It has no escape squares, right? That's that's yeah. the big issue here. Oh, it's like hell to play in a rapid game and Jeffrey's getting low on time. Uh oh Okay, Wasn't well, he was ahead of time because I was surprised to see that ever happen. Surprised. <laughs> and now it's like you just can't yeah. solve the problems yeah. and you just tick lower and lower yeah. and lower. Okay. Oh. Poor Jeffrey. Um, what is okay? So his knight isn't going anywhere. Yeah. No, he has to to lose that that knight here. Well, not really. I mean, he can just hold it, but I think rook a seven is a threat. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the main threat seems to be knight takes e four. Okay, knight takes e four. And then, yeah. well, just, just taking a center pawn, yeah, relieving him of that problem. Yeah. This is wow, a really nice position that Zhao Jun got in, actually. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe let's take a quick glance back at the game between uh, Xu Xiang Yu and uh, the international master we were watching. Right. The queen just got traded yeah. for a rook. He... Did it have no way out? It probably had a way out. Oh, the no, queen no, the on queen c5 is, is hanging. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's just a trade. Oh my goodness. So rook b1 was just sort of But hang on. just sort of losing, right? Right. Wait, cuz rook takes bishop takes um and oh okay, right. Black is just up a yeah. rook. Okay. Never Black mind. Just up a rook after queen b1. Never so. mind. <laughs> To go with his two pawns, he thought he would collect a rook. It's a nice collection he has there. Um, yeah. Is it is it too soon to call this game? There's still a little bit of a, uh, attacking chances. Okay, he took on f5. Black yeah. can't take there's, back. There's still a couple well-placed knights. He's got nine seconds, so we could share his agony with him for a moment here and see uh, see what he can come up with. Right. Okay, so queen f6 protecting. There's no more scary knight checks now because the queen can just take it. Knight d6, okay. White, White could have played knight to g6 there, potentially. Knight to g6 uh -huh. here? Yeah, well, but it's... Right, because if he takes, sense. you have knight e7 yeah. guarding. Each knight defends yeah. the other, but... That's cute. I'm sure it somehow doesn't work. Um. Okay, yeah, this... Yeah, here comes checkmate. Oh! Oh, no. He went out the other way. He went out the other door, but got forked. And he won the game. Okay, the pandas are 8-5. Right. So that gives the pandas 8 points. All right, nicely done. So exiting out of this game, yeah. back to Jeffrey's game, which... Back to Jeffrey's game. He tried... Let me see oh, what first happened. First he played h3. First he played h3 to get rid of the back rank mate and just gave the e pawn. Yeah. So presumably f3 led to some bad tactics. Probably so, and he was also getting yeah, really right. low on time, so I guess he just wanted to do Yeah, I think the problem with f3 was probably rook a7, knight b4, trade, and then queen c5, check, wins the knight. Uh, so f3, you were saying what after that? f3, then rook a7. Yeah. And the knight can't escape to b4 because of queen c5, check. Right. So he played h3, Zhao Jun got his pawn back, c5, mm. trying to get the knight out, but losing another pawn. The pawns are just falling and like the knight flies. Is still on a6. Yeah, that, that knight has been there for a long still time. I mean, if oh. he can somehow get his knight back into the end game, into the game, he can fight for a draw. <laughs> but where the heck is this homie going? Yeah, if you teleport the knight to g3, he can fight for a draw. Yes. But yes. Before he was ahead a pawn, now he's down a pawn. So he's lost two pawns trying to get the knight out, and it's still not out. So. Yeah. Okay. It's not happening this time. I, I can't disagree with you. I'm just really hoping. It's not happening this time. Hey, Logan. And basically, basically the pandas have wrapped up this match, right? I mean, they've got eight points in this position. Yeah. Let, let, let's oh, check. Wow. Is there any game we missed? What about um, Grandmaster uh, Bai Jin and, and Harman Vladi? Yeah. Who, I think. I thought he went to UCLA. I might be wrong. Um, but anyway. This okay, is a so close, closely timed game. 
was gonna say black's winning the bishop on c7 but he sacked the knight on d7 to do it so you know not too mm -hmm. not too big a deal um, hi super sane you do deserve a shout out thanks for always being here in the pro chess league in my chat okay queen d3 seems like it has to be an edge for white with the extra pawn and the weird g pawn move yeah yeah that g pawn um it might have made sense when he had, had an attack earlier on but you don't want that yeah. for this end game here no i mean there's a lot of pawn moves that make sense and then at some other position you wish they were elsewhere right it happened. right are the pandas just oh my gosh the pandas just got a Oh, wait, no, Cameron Wheeler no, won. Cameron won. Cameron won. Which we, yeah, we did think he was winning. It wasn't as easy. And then yeah. Jeffrey resigned. Watching it. Jeffrey resigned Jeffrey that won. fast, though? I'm just going to quickly what go happens. what happened. I mean, oh, his, his knight was just, his knight just got trapped. The knight was just taken, yep. yeah. Okay, makes sense. So last game of the matchup oh, man. here. Sorry, there. That was the worst feeling ever for that knight. It triumphantly takes the pawn on a6, <laughs> then sits there for like 15 moves until <sighs> while every other pawn gets like lost. And the then sa eventually the saddest him. knight escape story ever made. Oh, man. Okay. So. All right. So we'll follow this. This is our last game here, Veladi Wizard. Yeah. Oh, the bad G pawn just came up. Queen c3 check. Takes on a5. Um. He's thinking, should I play rook a8 or queen f6? Rook a8, okay, queen, queen f6. f6. Yep, <laughs> I, I like it. Um, yeah, if rook c8, he had wait, rook a7. Wait, doesn't he have rook queen h8 here? Oh, he sure does. Wait, did he not? Oh, he sure does. Did he not? Did that not win? It. Oh, it won. Okay, okay, <laughs> thank you for won. confirming. I needed that. There's a few moves that win harder than queen h8 won in that position. Oh. It's a checkmate. Okay, sorry. It would be in this position. Yep. I would have gotten that puzzle rush wrong. It would have been like, oh, you're only winning a queen. Nah, -uh. here's mate in three. Okay. No, there was there was no mate. You were right to play <laughs> queen h8 was the best option oh. there. Well, that is a pretty crushing lead for the pandas. Yeah. Once again. So the pandas go into that round up seven to five, and then they lay down the law again um, and substantially increase that. Yeah, these, these pandas are tricky. Yeah, so we, we have the final results here. I, I will say the San Diego Surfers and Minnesota Blizzards were really close to your prediction. You were off by one point of the final result, which is really close. I, I can't. It was pretty shocking that the San Diego pulled off that comeback in the last round. It really looked like it should have been eight and a half, seven and a half. Right. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I, I mean, a bunch of these matches featured like wipeouts in the fourth round like minnesota had to win three to one to tie sorry san diego had to go three one to tie the match mm -hmm. um seattle was in a very close match and won three to one in the last round right and the kangaroos and pandas also i think maybe each scored about three points in the last round to rack up the score right no this is this is a fun fun matchup um I didn't make predictions, so I don't have anything to say, but I hope you guys enjoy this. I had fun commentating with you. David, thanks for being yeah, here. Yeah, it'll, it'll leave the standings pretty pretty similar at the top of the Pacific because Australia will still be exactly one point ahead of Chengdu. They both won their matches. Mm -hmm. They both scored the same number of points. Um, San Jose and Dallas, which were the third and fourth place teams, yep. they lost to Australia and Chengdu by the exact same margin right so basically they'll be in the same position relative to each other the team that really gained today will be the seattle sluggers um who got their turn to play against the the worst team right and um and they will move up into sort of playoff contention with that win right yeah so uh, they'll probably be in third place after that yeah that i mean they were, they were in third place right now but it's nice that they get to keep keep that ranking because it's a good ranking oh, to sorry. have Seattle was in fifth place going into this match. Oh, behind. it already got updated. It must have just already been updated. Super yeah. fast. Nicely done, Greg. <laughs> yeah. So because they won, they passed San Jose and Dallas off of that that 10 points for the win. Got it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's, uh, that's the Pacific Division for now. I think uh, Australia and Chengdu both look really darn good. They look like one and two in the division for now and 
next week it'll be something different, right? We we won't see Chengdu and Australia play each other yet. Next week we'll see a battle royale. That's fun. So we are just you know keeping up with the video game trends, making some battle royale as well. <laughs> yeah. Is that where the name came from? I, huh? I'm gonna say that's where it came from. But yeah. yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. Do you have any final words you want to say? Lessons to impart upon the crowd from today? No, that was cool. I mean, I'll do I'll do a video at some point this week on uh, one or two of the best lessons that I've seen in the games from the various divisions. And when can uh, we escape, uh, expect those videos to come out and watch them in the first minute, just like the pairings get updated? should probably be published on Saturday, but it's not as precise as the pairings and so forth. <laughs> okay. And uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, there will be the highlight reviews with levy and with bigfoot so don't miss that you guys yeah yeah all right so yeah i mean if you want to catch up on extra videos that are going to come out i would just say follow the youtube channels of chess.com and um, professional chess league the pcl has its own channel as well where some of those videos come out yep i'll i'll make sure to go follow myself after this stream i'm already following chess.com but now i'll follow the pro chess league as well all right. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for hosting, Alexandra. It was fun working with you. Likewise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, mods and Gregs and audience and obviously the host. See you guys.